answers to the question if they have a different perspective or additional information to share. <coughs> Lastly, participants may type follow-up questions or additional questions using the chat feature of Zoom. You may also raise your hand if you would like to verbalize your question instead. Let me introduce our panelists for the day, who were kind enough to share some of their time and expertise with us today. First of all, we have Jimmy. Jimmy, can you please, yes, say hi? Okay. So hi, he's the region. <laughs> hi. So he's the regional chairperson of AMSA Taiwan 2020 2021. And he was also the director of academics of AMSA Taiwan in the last 10 years. Along with Jimmy, we also have Elvira from AMSA Indonesia. She was the regional chairperson of, of AMSA Indonesia 2017 2018. And she was also in the advisory board of AMSA Indonesia in 2018 and 2019. Say hi, Elvira. Thank you. Hi, everyone. So let's begin the session. The time now is 308 GMT plus 8. So it will be about 60 minutes. So let's start. Are you guys ready? <laughs> Jimmy and Elvira. Okay. Sure. <laughs> so for our very first question, this is under um, the national general question. So what is AMSA International to your chapter and in what way has AMSA International assisted you through your leadership? Maybe we can start with Elvira. Thank you for having me today, everyone. Um, speaking about the structural system, actually here in AMSA Indonesia, we have quite a different structure compared to other chapters probably, in which in our system, the regional chairperson role is as the representative for AMSA International, has also a role in leading the whole AMSA Indonesia as the president also in AMSA Indonesia. So um, as AMSA International has constitutions, we, are, we here as AMSA Indonesia has also our own constitutions and written in it, AMSA International role. We have a coordination line with AMSA International. So uh, we have monthly meeting, group chats, and everything with AMSA Internationals. And all RCs are very welcome to submit the agenda. We would like to discuss in an international level in every monthly meeting. So for me, AMSA International has taught me and also us how to become an international leader. Since we're not only active in the national, but also we can be active in an international level. So back then, I felt really helped since um, AMSA International actually helped us with the branding for our chapter so that members will be having the chance to go international and to have an international level of friendship, going to international competition, international meetings, and also uh, doing social service in, the, in an international level. I think that's for me. Thank you so much, well said, Avira. And I also heard that you reminded your members about the no dash rule this tenure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so how about Jimmy? Is how what do you think about it? Okay. Thank you, Marjorie. Um, I think uh, previously, AMSA International is quite a far away existence for many members in AMSA Taiwan like they do not really know what is AMSA International doing and what are the goals for AMSA International. But uh, in recent years, AMSA Taiwan tried to improve uh, member knowledge on AMSA International, such as uh, pro uh, improving promotion and information transparency of AMSA International. And hopefully there are more people that are knowing this organization better in AMSA Taiwan. And speaking of the uh, uh, assist that AMSA International have for me. Um, I think AMSA, I provide a great variety of opportunities uh, such as like uh, conferences or like some uh, competitions. And also uh, I think AMSA International is a great place for networking for uh, different members. So uh, you'll, got to, you, you'll get to know what other members are doing and how do they deal with uh, problems like uh, your chapter may have. And I would say that it is a place to exchange le uh, leadership experiences and gain different insights. 
Okay, <laughs> that's very inspiring to be honest. Um, if you guys ask me how is in AMSA International, I'm lucky because I have seniors that are directly involved, but I can imagine if the chapters do not have uh, subsequent um, members being nominated or being recruited in AMSA International, it's actually very hard to actually know about AMSA International, especially when I was a junior. So definitely this tenure, we will try our best to improve. Thank you so much. Okay, so please flash the next question. So what is the membership system practiced in your chapter? Maybe Jimmy can start first. And how do you recruit universities that have not joined AMSA? This is a very tricky question. Okay, so um, currently we have 14 universities joining AMSA Taiwan, including both medicine and Chinese medicine students in uh, Taiwan. And uh, actually we have contracts with each member universities and the contract will be renewed each year to ensure like proper collaboration between local university and AMSA Taiwan. And as for recruiting new members, um, first of all, uh, you, uh, the, the university have to be, a, uh, there should be a medicine department or a Chinese medicine department in this university to join AMSA Taiwan. And uh, we will open calls for universities that would like to join AMSA each year. And uh, I mentioned about the contract. Uh, the contract will set out some responsibility, obligation and right to the university. So, uh, these universities will have to nominate their local coordinators and assist AMSA activities and promotion. But they will also have the right to send uh, general delegates to MC or EMC. Thank you so much, Jimmy. So how about AMSA Indonesia, Elvira? Okay, thank you for the question. So in AMSA Indonesia, currently we have 36 AMSA universities participating in AMSA Indonesia out of 80 Faculty of Medicine in Indonesia. Uh, same as AMSA Taiwan, we only uh, receive participants from Faculty of Medicine. In AMSA Indonesia, we have two types of membership, which are the official members, and second is the observer members. So uh, for the way of approaching, there are two types of approaching new members, actively and passively. Every AMSA University who would like to join AMSA Indonesia can reach us via every social media, or maybe they can contact directly the Secretary of Membership and Development in AMSA Indonesia. And the Secretary will also actively searching and contacting the university who has not been a part of AMSA Indonesia and probably do a presentation to their respective university in order to see the interest of the respective AMSA university uh, in joining AMSA. After one AMSA university is willing to join AMSA Indonesia, uh, they must submit some documents needed from approval for, from the dean and etc. And they will be given one year of observership membership uh, and additional one supervisory university who can help them to show the observer university on how the system exactly going on in AMSA for a year. And in the national, in our national meeting, uh, before being our official member in the following year, uh, if the respective university able to achieve the target written in our constitution, they will be given the membership. And in Namsa Indonesia, we divide our members into six districts. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you so much, Evira. So I just want to clarify, um, you have a secretary that is um, like specifically involved and in charge for all of the membership of Amsa Indonesia, am I right? True. Okay. Just like so, now we're here in Amsa International. Yeah, okay. So it's like a replica of it. How about Amsa Taiwan? Do you have any position or a specific job scope being assigned to anyone for this? Uh, uh, assigned for what? Membership. Oh, um, actually our membership are uh, under direct uh, supervision of RCs and a general secretary, and we do not have um. director of membership. So um, every university that would like to join MSL Taiwan will have to uh, approach uh, either RCs or the general secretary. Okay, so I hope that our audience is clear about that. So you can choose the system that you want as long as it's um, systematic and organized in a way that you're comfortable with. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay, so next question, please. 
So how do you apply the visions of AMSA in, our in your chapter? Uh, sometimes we call it, uh, we call them philosophies. So it's up to you how you want to label it. It's knowledge, action, and friendship. So uh, Elvira, would you like to start first? Sure. Um, so knowledge, action, friendship are very important in AMSA. They are the core values in AMSA, right? <laughs> So every, word, every year when there are RC candidates who are willing to campaign, uh, to do campaign to become an RC, they will, be, they will bring vision and also missions that is in line with uh, AMSA philosophies, which are knowledge, action, and friendship. And, uh, I feel, uh, and, that, and the first step for uh, members to know, uh, and the first step uh, to imply that to our members is member, have to know that the, our philosophies are knowledge, action, and friendship, and why why uh, AMSA is here. So uh, they have to know how the history of AMSA and how are the basic stuff in AMSA. And we convey this uh, to members through the obligation to carry out the AMSA Indonesia session at each AMSA university once a year. And in AMSA, in AMSA Indonesia, we also have several divisions which are also adopted by various AMSA universities, which represent each of the values that AMSA brings, the philosophies that AMSA brings. And each division has a work program that is useful to realizing all these core values. And um, yeah, and uh, every, yeah, that's all I think. Okay, thank you so much, Avira. So how about AMSA Taiwan? How do you guys actually apply these three pillars, I mean, uh, visions of AMSA? Um, so uh, speaking of promoting these three pillars, you have to let your members know these three pillars first. So promotion is very important, like uh, marketing and promotion to let uh, your members know what are AMSA International doing. I think that is the first step. And secondly, we actually integrate AMSA International Vision into our own motto. And in AMSA Taiwan, our mo own motto is work hard and play harder. So work hard can uh, relate to the action and the knowledge part, and play harder can relate to the uh, friendship part. So that is kind of a think globally and act locally uh, way of doing it. And Actually, we also host a great variety of activities that correspond to AMSA International Vision. Like we have national academic workshops or competitions regarding the knowledge part. And we have uh, community services or uh, hospital tours regarding the action part. And we have a national executive board trip or uh, the national general assembly regarding the friendship part. So I think we have several activities that uh, directly correspond with the uh, AMSA International Vision. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I, I'm really happy to hear that uh, both of you actually, both of your chapters actually apply the visions really well. And just to clarify a bit, these visions are actually visions of AMSA as a whole. It's not only by AMSA International. So, um, a few new chapters actually tend to ask the question, oh, uh, can we actually have the same vision? Yes, definitely. So it is a vision of AMSA as a whole, your chapter, your university, or of course, in the international level. So feel free to use it. Don't ask anymore. Okay, so for the next slide. So next, we'll be focused on the National Executive Board. Um, last time, we do not really set a name for all of our members' board. So, okay, before that, I would like to clarify. Last time, we only used the word chapter as our, to address all of the chapters. But from this tenure onwards, we will also use the word members with a capital M because all of you chapters are also our members and as an NGO we have all of you forming a huge organization supporting us for AMSA International and for individual members it will be with a small letter M so that makes a huge difference when it's a big letter M and a small letter M so I hope that you are familiar with these new terms and uh Internationally, we are called International Executive Board together with the RCs, but if it's the EC ourselves, we just call ourselves ECs of AMSA International. So 
Nationally, for chapter level, we'll address you guys as NEB, the RCs and their NEB. I hope that this is clear with the new terms that we are setting this tenure. Okay, so getting back to our questions, what are the things the RC should prioritize after being elected and how do you balance them as a medical student? So let's hear from Elvira. First, then we'll proceed with Jimmy. Thank you for the question. Uh, the first thing that uh, an RC should prioritize for me is its members in the chapters, its members with the small m and also its AMSA universities or members with the capital M. And in AMSA Indonesia, actually, after being elected as the RC, we have the duty to form the executive board for the tenure in less than a month. And at the same time, we here as, as, as the unifier of all AMSA university with also a coordination line so that we have to have a mutual relationship in order to help AMSA universities in all their problems and grow together as a unity. And if something big happens to AMSA University, AMSA Indonesia will be the first one who get involved right away as requested by the universities. And um, to balance the life of a medical student and life as the RC, for me, uh, it's quite challenging because um, Actually, everyone and everything in AMSA Indonesia and also AMSA International and also AMSA Universities are very supportive. And there, there will be no sudden meeting and everything is very well planned. And, and there, may, there might be an exception if we collaborate with the external parties, especially the government. And since I was uh, chosen as the RC, I felt that I have a duty and a big responsibility for my AMSA Indonesia. And the people have put their trust on me and that, and I'm not gonna upset them. So uh, that's the reason uh, why I'll do my best for them. Um, so the formula is figure it, uh, figure, it, figure it out and being more organized. And I feel like I was more productive not only in AMSA, but also in my academic life when I was the RC of AMSA Indonesia. So the formula is to create love and care for AMSA. Ooh, okay, that's a nice <laughs> one. So how about you, Jimmy? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, actually RC in Taiwan and uh, the general secretary are elected together by the previous NEB. And uh, RC and General Secretary will be responsible to form the uh, NEB for the next tenure. And also we have to aid local coordinators to set out their annual goals. And uh, as for the priority after being elected, I think the vision for the tenure, uh, your tenure is super important. Like uh, what do you want to achieve in your tenure and what are the working environment you want to build or what kind of uh, national executive board you would like to have and it's all about your, how you envision your own chapter. So after I was uh, elected, uh, our general secretary and I, like we have a, a great discussion about what we try to achieve in this tenure and I think that is uh, as important as uh, forming the new EB as well. So how do you ensure a fair and smooth regeneration process in AMSA in your AMSA chapter, AMSA member? And how do you ensure sustainability to be maintained? For example, like uh, you have the RC and also the general secretary elected by the previous tenure. So how about the other positions in AMSA Taiwan? Maybe Jimmy starts first. Okay, so um, I think first of all, the proper handover is very important. So. Uh, in AMSA Taiwan, the National Executive Board is required to fulfill the handover properly before his or hers uh, tenure officially ends. And the proper handover will ensure the sustainability of uh, the na National Executive Board. And secondly, uh, I think that when you uh, regenerate your national EB, there are uh, like several factors that you have to take into consideration. Uh, take inclusiveness, for example. Um, actually, in AMSA Taiwan, uh, several years before, the previous National Executive Board are composed mainly of certain universities. Like, most of the NEB members are from the same university. And actually, that, that are no good, right? You, we have to have inclusiveness to improve dif uh, different universities' uh, participation. 
So uh, in, re uh, in recent years, the RCs and including me, we take inclusiveness of universities into consideration. And I think that is quite a important factor as well. Thank you so much, Jimmy. I really like that point. How about Elvira? Um, regeneration is very important in an organization. And to ensure a fair regeneration process, actually in Anta Indonesia, every three until four months before the tenure ends, submissions will be open for candidates for the regional chairperson of Anta Indonesia. And about three until four months before the election of uh, uh, the RC of Anta Indonesia in our national assembly, uh, RC candidates will be guided and assigned um, assigned for a uh, four kind of tasks that is that are very useful for deepening their insight and preparing uh, them to lead AMSA Indonesia. And during during this assignment period, the RC will communicate with the, all the previous RCs, the current AMSA NEB, the AMSA University representatives, the AMSA International Executive Committees, the all of uh, quite few members, external parties, and others. And after that, RC candidates will take a fit and proper test to state whether they deserve to be the next RC or not. And after that, finally, there will be an online and also offline national campaign uh, that will be carried out before the National Assembly. Um, and after being elected, RC is obliged to form a team that will serve, with, uh, that will serve within uh, one year and after, uh, that will serve um, and that must be made in only one month after the RC is being elected. And after that, the handover will be given from all the previous NEB to the current NEB to ensure that um, everything that is carried out is not repeated from last year, but is continued in this year. And we ensure this regeneration uh, runs for RC and also for all EGs runs as fairly as possible and involves um, all parties so that um, the RC that is chosen and also the EBIS is truly the choice of all AMSA universities and all the elected executive board candidates from AMSA Indonesia is are, are, are the best candidates from all AMSA Indonesia and every rules and every terms and conditions for the generation process is written in our AMSA Indonesia constitution. For Thank instance. you so much. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Thank you so much, Elvira. Okay. So I I personally think that AMSA International has a lot to learn from our two members, AMSA Indonesia and AMSA Taiwan. And this tenure, I am very proud that we are finally implementing a proper regeneration system through our constitution as well. And we definitely have a lot to learn from one another, from our members. It is time to actually set a proper regeneration system for AMSA International to be transparent, true and true to all of our members. Okay, so please flash the next question. So how do you define a member in your AMSA chapter? Um, I'm very curious, as you guys have already mentioned and explained about your membership system. So how do you define by default? I think I can further explain about it of how we expect the answers to be. Because some universities or some chapters that we have noticed, they usually have a system in a way that uh, you have to pay a fee, then we accept you. But some they don't. Some is like, as long as your university is under us, you are automatically a member. So um, can maybe AMSA Taiwan or AMSA Indonesia inspire us with your answers? Anyone would like to go first? Okay, then uh, Jimmy first. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, we do not have any fees for member to join AMSA Taiwan. If one university have contract, which I have mentioned previously with AMSA Taiwan, then their respective member will automatically become the member of AMSA Taiwan. But there are also some restrictions such as you should be either a student currently studying medicine or Chinese medicine. But actually there are no other restrictions. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. It's kind of similar with my chapter as well. Okay, so how about Elvira? AMSA Indonesia, how does it run? In our constitution, it is written that member of AMSA Indonesia
Asia is defined as AMSA University yet, and also being officially accepted as the official members in the general SMB will become our members and all AMSA Indonesia members must be a medical student, an active medical student. I mean. Okay, so thank you. So I, I can see that uh, both chapters that are here today actually kind of practice a similar system, I can see. So um, so I'm going to explain on behalf of AMSA International. So um, from AMSA International, if your university is directly under your AMSA member and all medical students under the university are automatically members of the respective AMSA member. And I think that AMSA Indonesia and AMSA Taiwan are actually very good role models for this concept. And so... Um, I do know a few chapters actually practice membership fee, but I, <laughs> we wouldn't uh, recommend as such because we wouldn't recognize this act as uh, from AMSA International as well. Okay, so next slide, please. Okay, so how do you connect with each university? Uh, and you believe that AMSA Taiwan has an LC system. So are there any systems applied in your chapter to promote communication with your LCs per se? Maybe Jimmy start first. Okay, so um, let me think about it. Um, I think local coordinators is really important because um, they are just like the spoke spokesperson for each university. So you have to take their opinions into great consideration because they reflect what the university actually are facing. So actually there will be um, regular meetings with local coordinators um, and this meeting will be held by either RC or the director of MSEP uh, regularly. And uh, we will try to know whether um, these local coordinators are confronted with uh, certain problems and how could MSEP Taiwan uh, assist them. Okay, thank you. So I, I just another add-on question. What is the platform, social media platform that you always use to connect with your board, NAB? for Amsa Taiwan. Okay, so um, we actually use Messenger and Facebook group for our main platform. But actually, I think that uh, a, a soul or a, there should be only one or maybe two platforms for communicating with your members. Because if you have too many platforms, they will not know uh, how should they approach you when they have problems. Like there are too many platforms. So after uh, several years of uh, adapting these platforms, we finally choose uh, Messenger and Facebook uh, Facebook group. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay, so I'll pass it on to Elvira. <laughs> mm, thank you, Marjorie. So first of all, I will explain first the hierarchy in AMSA Indonesia. Um, the highest hierarchy in AMSA Indonesia is the National Assembly held on the very end of a senior. And the National Assembly will then have a common line to AMSA universities through AMSA Indonesia, who will, which will be executed uh, by the Executive Board of AMSA Indonesia, supervised by the Advisory Board of AMSA Indonesia, and also in coordination with AMSA International. Um, the chosen regional chairperson will be having 17 other, 11 other executive boards to help him or her to execute the tenure for the whole year. And each executive board, each uh, national executive board of AMSA Indonesia will have approximately seven until 30 national teams uh, spread all around Indonesia in each division to ease, to ease the way of coordination and communication to AMSA universities. And also um, every AMSA universities will also have their own executive board uh, will also have their own executive board led by a representative for each AMSA university, which will be in charge for uh, to report their AMSA universities on a monthly meeting to AMSA Indonesia, attend all the national meetings, and also coordinate uh, with AMSA Indonesia. And as a mode of mass communication, we also have mailing lists, a website, and other social media such as Instagram, Facebook, and probably TikTok in the future. <laughs> uh, in, and in every national event, we will have approximately about 300 until 400 members as a participant, as participants, so that you know, we could build connection not only online, but also offline. 
Okay, thank you so much, Elvira. Yeah. <laughs> so we can see a very international event. There will be also mm -hmm. a direct meeting with all the representatives from all uh, Ansa universities. Oh, okay. So we can see two different modes of communication here between AMSA Taiwan and AMSA Indonesia. And I really hope that these two different modes can actually inspire you in your NEB management. Okay, so next slide, please. So what type of events would you recommend in order to develop the skills and, strength and strengthen your members? How do you ensure good participations in each event held? Um, maybe we can start with Elvira. Um, so probably what event can I recommend? Um, actually at big events like national events that we have um, approximately five national events uh, yearly. Um, we always put on some various activities to build friendship between members. And with a variety of a clearly structured online and also offline activities, uh, this can be a good bonding forum between members. And the initial way is uh, when an individual member joins an AMSA university member, uh, at the beginning, uh, we must explain in detail what potential can they develop in AMSA. So we have to explain them uh, one by one, uh, what can they have, what can they, become after they successfully um, join AMSA. And in that way, they themselves will find, will find out what event or what committee, what committee should uh, suit them well in AMSA as we offer various kind of opportunities. And to open up a wider opportunities, uh, in addition to national events, there are also some district events, uh, either social action events or social gathering that uh, can be more that can be uh, more possible for them to join since uh, actually in Indonesia, the distance between one AMSA university and the other AMSA university and the other faculty of medicine is uh, quite far away from one another. So the district system uh, was built uh, to gather the AMSA universities that located um, in the quite, uh, quite um, not distant, you get what I mean? Yes, yes. I can imagine the closer, geographical yeah. layout. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because actually, AMSA Indonesia is uh, Indonesia is an archipelago country, so that um, every AMSA university is located very, very far away from each other. And the tickets was also very uh, expensive to meet one another. Okay, thank you so much, Avira. I think that can actually inspire all the chapters that actually have a very wide geographical spread out, like Indonesia's. So, how about uh, AMSA Taiwan, Jimmy? Um, so we have like many events annually, but I think the most uh, precious part is the capacity building. So uh, I think that it is really important to improve personal soft skills and knowledge in. Uh, AMSA like chapter. So uh, we provide several capacity building opportunities for our members. And I think that self-improvement for uh, the respective members will make them think that AMSA is worthy of staying and participating. And which also help ensuring good uh, participate, participation in further uh, events. And uh, as for how do we ensure good, uh, good participation? Um, uh, sometimes many members do like they want to take a more active role in national activity but they don't have the information of what activity they can participate in or how could they participate so uh, I think that uh, ensuring the transparency of activity information is really important and as for AMSA Taiwan we have several promotion platforms such as Facebook and I, uh, Instagram. And actually we are trying to build email subscription system to make information more uh, instant. So you'll be starting um, a mailing list as well, is it? Um, for AMSA Taiwan? Yeah, but we haven't started yet, but like we're still uh, trying to uh, collect the emails for different members and to build a subscription list. 
Okay. Thank you so much. And I think we really learned a lot through two very different chapters per se. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, for the next slide, please. So how do you distribute the team and resources for these events? I think Elvira has partially kind of answered this question earlier. So what are the usual components of a basic team? Um, maybe Elvira start first. So how do your teams usually run in AMSA Indonesia for each event? Um, so actually, uh, probably the usual component of the basic team will be uh, the leader and also the uh, usual main committees. But uh, probably for me, uh, the, the executive board from AMSA Indonesia uh, must always uh, have, uh, must always super supervise and even participate uh, in every event possible they could participate um and as for as for the national event uh, we we actually we usually bid uh, on whether which in, which universities would like to be the host for the national ev uh, event but for AMSA Indonesia we have always involved in the planning implementation and also evaluation process uh, to the whole, uh, to the whole process, and to maximize the supervision, we usually divide uh, our supervision based on the field of our executive board. For example, um, AMSEP in AMSA universities will be more supervised by the director of AMSEP AMSA Indonesia, and so on. Okay, so it's based on their portfolio. I can see the strength that they have applied for. Sure. Yes. Okay, so how about Answer Taiwan, Jimmy? Um, so, I, actually, uh, this year we started to set project manager for each event. So, such as the director of academics will be the project manager for national academic competition. And this project manager will have the full right to establish their own uh, working team. And what RC and general secretary do is just coordinating different projects and checking the workload of each national executive board member. And uh, we will send out a Google form to survey the national EB monthly availability for working, like previously before the tenure. And uh, as for the basic team, uh, from my perspective, it should be composed of some mandatory roles, such as the project manager and uh, director of marketing, director of pub uh, publication. They are the mandatory roles. And also there are other roles such as group moderators, if you need, or photographer and some other mobile personnel who take care of uh, emergency issues. And how we allocate people into different roles is based on the Google form we sent uh, before the tenure, like uh, their availability for working. Mm, okay, so um, almost similar, but not that similar, I can say. But anyway, it's based on everyone's strength. And I have a few, just one question before we proceed to the next one. Um, I understand that AMSA Taiwan has also a precedent in the NEB, right? Okay, so uh, maybe you can, uh, because I actually received a few complaints from our RCs just for the past four months that they say that it is very heavy for them because they have to run and also lead the whole board. So maybe uh, you can explain further about how and why is there a precedent in your NEB and how it actually helped with the management of AMSA Taiwan. Yeah. Okay, so... Um, actually, that is a quite tricky uh, problem because, um, how do you say it? Actually, in Taiwan, there are um, the FMS Taiwan, the Federation of Medical Students Taiwan, and the AMSA, Inter uh, AMSA Taiwan. So um, this is a, a, like two separate organizations in Taiwan. But I know that in some members, they are... Uh, uh, they are merged together, uh, together like AMSA Hong Kong. The, uh, uh, Federation of Medical Students are uh, merged with AMSA, right? But in Taiwan, it is separate. So uh, in, I think, last year or uh, two years ago, AMSA Taiwan was um, like, uh, we become independent from uh, FMS Taiwan. And from, that, uh, from then on, we set out a president to... Uh, 
to fulfill the national regulation from the Ministry of Internal. So in Taiwan, you have to have a like a press for uh, the organization. Like if you want to be a legal organization and to be under legal protection. So because we, we went uh, dep uh, independent from the FMS Taiwan, so we uh, somehow have to set out a president. And actually the president is now currently uh, in responsible for a membership, uh, like somehow membership stuff, like uh, holding meetings for the government, like the government will uh, tell us to hold meetings annually and we have to fulfill it in order to be a legal organization in Taiwan under the Ministry of Internal. Yes, I saw the press statement on Ansa Taiwan's Facebook page actually, but okay, thank you for the explanation. I think it works similarly for many chapters and that's why we are also having so many change this tenure because we are trying to get our NGO status as well and we have to have so many meetings for it and thank you so much, Jimmy. Okay, so... Um, well, if any of the chapters want to have a president, <laughs> feel free to do so. But regional chairperson will be the only sole individual to liaise with AMSA International. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. Thank you so much, Jimmy. <laughs> so um, next question. Do you have regular partners to collaborate with each? I mean, for each of your events, do you have any? Um, maybe we'll start with AMSA Indonesia first, Elvira. Yes, uh, sure. We have quite plenty of partners in terms of GOs and NGOs and also partnership who can um, fund it our event, right? You mean uh, the partner who can fund it our event? Oh yeah, we have quite plenty of um, GOs uh, such as Ministry of Health, NGOs who regularly collaborate and uh, we are actually always very open for every uh, for every new GOs and NGOs who would like to collaborate with us, who have the same inline vision uh, with us. And also for the partnership, we have uh, Elsevier as our regular partners and also Kaplan Medical for, each, uh, for, the, for approximately 10, 10 last 10 years, this 10 last 10 years probably. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Elvira. Okay, so how about answer Taiwan? Um, actually, uh, I think that we are in collaboration with several universities, like uh, in our mini AMSIC, that is equivalent to the National, exact, uh, National General Assembly. Uh, there will be a part to have a hospital tour and actually, AMSA Taiwan is in collaboration with several hospitals in, uh, in different uh, regions. So uh, that will help when we are having hospital tours or having uh, community services. Thank you so much. So I think um, we have different scopes of partners in this context, but just a gentle reminder to all of our members, if you ever need any partners and if you're facing any financial uh, difficulty or any sponsorship difficulty, please let AMSA International know. We'll be more than happy to partner you up with our partners, coexisting partners as of now. Okay, so, um, so next slide, please. So next, we'll be focused on the last category, members. We are quite fast, actually. <laughs> so how do you promote members to be active at national level? As um, I think, okay, so just now, like what uh, Elvira has already mentioned, you have national events for AMSA Indonesia, you have biddings, but how do you make people want to bid? How do you promote members to be active at national events per se? So uh, maybe Elvira can start first. Is Elvira here? Yes, I'm back. So okay. <laughs> okay, maybe Jimmy first. <laughs> so how do you make people fill up your Google form? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think providing enough incentive for local members is very important. Uh, as for AMSA Taiwan, 
our general delegate selection of MC and EMC is somehow based on the member activity in national uh, level. So each university will be allocated at least one spot for MC and EMC, but the rest of the spots will be allocated uh, based on their member activity in their uh, national level. So there will be like cumulative points for almost every national participation, such as attending National General Assembly or attending National Academic Competition. And uh, these cumulative points of the university will de uh, determine how many general delegates uh, spots will they, will they get. So actually, uh, I think people are quite um, craving for the general delegate spots. So uh, they are like participating really actively. And also promotion is really important, just as I mentioned, ensuring the transparency of acti uh, activity information and uh, prom promoting your uh, activity in a great variety of platforms, Facebook, Instagrams, emails, and online and offline. Well, that's true. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. So next, Elvira. I see that Neta is uh, in the Zoom, right? Neta? Okay, um, so should I answer on behalf of Kyle Elvira, Marjorie? Uh, yes. Elvira, are you okay? Or is it okay if Neta answers for you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neta can answer for me. <laughs> okay, thank you so okay. much, Elvira. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Arnata as the current um, regional chairperson of AMSA Indonesia of the tenure 2020 and 2021. Regarding how we promote our members to become active at the national level, I think uh, Kyle Fair has mentioned this earlier as well, that we have a national team in AMSA Indonesia, whereby the National Executive Board of AMSA Indonesia will have their own team under uh, working under them. For example, we have here uh, with me the Secretary of Membership and Development, Felicia. Uh, she will have her AMSA elite chairperson. So all the members in AMSA Indonesia, for as long as you have been an official member in your AMSA university, you're able to register and apply to become a part of the national team AMSA Indonesia. And this is also one of the ways that we communicate between AMSA Indonesia or the NEBs of AMSA Indonesia with our member universities. Besides that, we also provide a lot of opportunities uh, for our members to become active as well. Um, Kyle Veer has mentioned that we have national events. So all our members are able to register and participate to become delegates and national events. And we also have a lot of um, work programs that our members are able to participate in as well. So for example, we have the projects per district or per area of the AMSA universities. And we also have a lot of um, other work programs and other activities that our members are able to participate in. So basically, I guess um, all our projects and all the activities and events that we have on a national level, they're very much open to our members. And of course, and of course our target are uh, the members in each of the AMSA universities as well. So I guess to summarize, um, we provide opportunities in a national team, also national events, and we have work programs that will benefit our members. I hope that answers the question. Thank you for the opportunity. Yes, crystal clear. Thank you so much, Anita. Do you have anything else that you want to add on, Elvira? Hi, that's all. <laughs> okay, Very thank good. you so much. Thank you so much, Javira. Okay, so next slide, please. This is a follow-up question. I, I think that all of you have already answered it really well just now through your answers. Thank you so much. So let's get to the next question. So what system have you used to keep track of members' progress? Okay, let me further elaborate. Some chapters have a reward pun punishment system. So does your chapter have anything like that? Okay, so uh, maybe we can pass to Amsa Indonesia first. Yeah, maybe Anita can answer this because she is a current regional chairperson. And the system is quite different. Uh, okay, yes, Neta, okay. the floor is yours. Okay, thank you, Marjorie, and thank you, uh, Kai Alfira, as well. Um, for AMSA Indonesia, so as Kai Alfira has mentioned, we have two national meetings, which is the Rapat Kerja Nasional, or the annual grand meeting that we have at the start of the tenure. And in this uh, annual grand meeting, the, each of the representative of the AMSA University will be um, delivering the progress, uh, de delivering the uh, one of the work programs that they will be bringing for the tenure 2020-2021. And at the end of the tenure, at the uh, other grand meeting, which 
which is the Musyawarah Nasional, the representative will also be uh, reporting back the um, laporan pertanggungjawaban or what have they done uh, throughout that tenure as well. And we also have um, regular online meetings whereby the each Shams University will also be sharing about their progress and also all the projects that they have. And in this tenure in 2020-2021, we're actually initiating a new system as well, uh, whereby we are making a initial university target form, whereby the AMSA universities are able to fill their targets for one tenure ahead. So here we are able to identify in each of the divisions that AMSA Indonesia has, for example, in academics, research, uh, collaboration with external parties, so GOs and NGOs, community outreach, and PNP, MND, and so on and so forth. What are the struggles that each AMSA university is having, and what are the targets from one year ahead? And from these uh, initial target form, AMSA Indonesia is able to identify the focus of each of our organization of, of each of our member universities and on um, the NEBs, the national executive boards are going to follow up each of the member universities according to the focus that they have selected. For example, let's say AMSA University X selects community outreach as their focus, then our secretary of community outreach will be following the up, them up throughout the tenure. And this is also uh, implemented through our national team. We have our national team who will also follow up and specifically the AMSA LD chairperson also has a system called the evaluation report whereby they collect data from AMSA universities three, time in, three times in a tenure and in this tenure as well we're initiating the AMSA university report which will be published in the Musyawarah Nasional or the final uh, national event in the tenure and it's going to reflect all the um, progress and all the contribution that the AMSA University has made towards AMSA Indonesia throughout the entire tenure. Um, I hope that answers your question. It's very detailed. Thank you so much, Neta. <laughs> so how about AMSA Taiwan, Jimmy? Okay. Um, so as I mentioned previously, we have the accumulative point system for general delegate allocation. And however, this year we also implement a new man management system called OKR, Objective and Key Results. And um, actually some companies, like maybe uh, you guys know, they use KPI, Key Performance Indicators. But uh, in recent years, there are more innovative enterprise using another system that is OKR. So a uh, Key Performance Indicator is a more top-down uh, system, while OKR is a more bottom-up system. So uh, in AMSA Taiwan, the National Executive Board member will list down their main objective each year that they want to achieve in uh, his or her tenure. And according to different objectives, they will set different uh, key results. So take the director of academic as example. Their objective for this tenure is to improve medical students' academic ability. And they set out several key results, such as holding at least uh, two academic workshops and holding at least uh, one academic uh, competition. So uh, based on different objectives, you will have uh, different key results. And uh, RCs and uh, general secretary will regularly check up these OKRs and uh, uh, tell them to uh, update their key results. Like if uh, they have already fulfilled one key result, they can set out a new key result or even a new objective. So I think OKR system make uh, the National Executive Board member in AMSA Taiwan more active in what they want to do and what they want to achieve in their tenure. Mm, that is something very new. Thank you so much, Jimmy. <laughs> we are all learning today. Okay, so next question, please. Okay, so how do you bring a leadership model to your members? Do you have any training or um, class or module per se that you actually have to ask all of your members to participate or just your all of your NEB to join? Um, maybe we can start with AMSA Indonesia first. Yes, thank you, Marjorie. Mm -hmm. Is Arneta here? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so actually we have uh, the national leadership training, but because uh, there is COVID going on right now, maybe Arneta can explain how we will conduct our national leadership training this year. Okay, so um, thank you, Kai Alfira. Yes, uh, as Kai Alfira has mentioned, we usually have five national events within a 10 year, and one of them is the national leadership training, which is uh, basically where we train our uh, 
upcoming representatives. Like for example, each AMSA university usually brings their um, respective candidates uh, for the next representative or leader in each of the member universities. In this tenure, we'll be having the, uh, we combine two national events, which is the national action event and the national leadership training to form the national action and leadership training. So here we usually have a lot of trainings regarding uh, communication, leadership, and all those things. And it's usually formed in kind of like a military training kind of format. So it's going to be conducted in um, an ALT as well. But I think um, to answer this question, we are also initiating something new in this tenure, whereby we're creating the national uh, theme curriculum and upgrading. So we're going to create uh, frequent upgrading sessions per division and also in general, where our members are able to learn more about AMSA itself and develop in their respective fields as well, with the hopes that we will create the next generation of NEDs and hopefully the next generation of RCs as well. I hope it answers wow. your question. How about the next generation of OCs? <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Nita. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so how about Jimmy from AMSA Taiwan? Do you have any training or model system for your members or your NEB? Um, so actually, we have a kind of national EB trip at the very first of each tenure. And during this trip, uh, uh, actually, we do will have fun, like we will go to uh, amusement park or so, but uh, at night we will have some of like a special event and this special event uh, will uh, have the chance to learn about leadership and discuss about uh, your own vision about the upcoming, uh, upcoming tenure. So I think uh, this an EV trip is kind of a, a, a trip with friendship and learning and it is quite fun. And also we have several workshops in, uh, in our tenure, like uh, about some soft skills such as communication or negotiation. And I think these skills are really important for uh, leadership as well. Thank you so much, Jimmy. It, they are very two different ends, but I can say to the same objectives at the end. Okay, so next slide, please. So this is the last question that we have prepared, but we have additional questions in case if the time is not up yet. So how do you train and encourage members to run for the regeneration process of AMSA International? Okay, I think AMSA Indonesia has a lot of plans in mind. <laughs> but how about AMSA Taiwan? Maybe Jamie starts this. We need more AMSA Taiwan people in AMSA International. <laughs> So how do you encourage them in this tenure? <laughs> so um, as I mentioned before, we have the an EB trip in the very start of our tenure. So we will like comprehensively introduce what Amazon International are doing and what are the organizational chart and uh, who are uh, who who is the OC and like all the details. We will be like introducing to our national EB, but. Um, I think there are a main uh, limitation to uh, AMSA Taiwan members to take part in uh, AMSA International is that uh, in Taiwan, like people who uh, take part in AMSA, in, uh, AMSA Taiwan are uh, first year students or second year students, maybe third year students. But um, after they take part in AMSA Taiwan, they may think, oh, I want to go to AMSA International. But uh, it turns out that they are uh, already uh, in fourth year uh, when they have to uh, prepare for the uh, license exam. So um, I think when uh, the members in Amazon Taiwan want to go to Amazon International, they do not have time and they have to prepare for their exams. But in this tenure, we try to ensure the uh, promotion of Amazon International opportunities, like sharing it more instantly and sharing it to more uh, members and with hope that they they can uh, take part in Amazon International International more. Like personally, I think I I hope that they they will uh, take part in Amazon I more. Okay, <laughs> we need more motivation. I think Jimmy, you need to be more hyped to pull them in. <laughs> Okay, so how about Amsa Indonesia? I'm really curious how you guys can, you know, be so hyped for so many years. You really need to inspire everyone else. Okay, thank you, Marjorie, for the question. 
So actually, um, one in one of our national event, which is the Indonesian Medical Students Training and Competition, we have this session called uh, AMSA International Session, in which AMSA International Committees will be invited uh, to give a brief presentation about the possibility to work in an international level as the Executive Committee of AMSA International. So actually, we have the exposure about AMSA International and probably why uh, we have lots of members in AMSA International who who are currently the executive committee it's because the amount of our members was also big uh, as you know uh, in Indonesia we have lots of people and also lots of med medical students that's why uh, probably lots of people want to go international and want to work in an international level and um for, for Irma, we also uh, held some discussion with the representatives of each AMSA universities and uh, me personally back then i would do a personal approach with the respective representative in order to encourage them to go for it AMSA international and maybe aneta can add on some tips okay so thank you kai alfira um in AMSA Indonesia, we have this work program called the AMSA Indonesia session, which is mandatory for each AMSA university to conduct this AMSA Indonesia session. And it basically exp uh, explains a lot about AMSA Indonesia, the NEVs, and also the work programs that uh, occur in AMSA Indonesia. And it's very frequent as well that our member universities don't only ask for an AMSA Indonesia session, but they also ask for a uh, want to learn more about AMSA International as well. So for example, just this morning, we just came from an AMSA Indonesian AMSA International session as well in one of our member universities. So I guess that is, I hope that in the future we can have more sessions whereby the AMSA International EC committees as well as are also able to come directly to our individual uh, AMSA universities. And this, has, and this has actually been going on since I was a new member. So I think around 2018, 2019, um, when I was still a member in AMSA in, 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 AMSA, in my AMSA university, uh, the ECs were also able to come and share regarding uh, AMSA International. So I guess it comes along with the uh, high level ex of exposure that our members have, not only from IMSDC, but also um, in AMSA Indonesia and also AMSA, AMSA International sessions. And I hope that this could be something that occurs more often because as we know, we're probably using a lot of these uh, online platforms. So I hope that the ECs could come and visit our universities more often as well. Thank you. Very agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Neta. So you can probably visit at every AMSA university, Marjorie. <laughs> um, to be honest, not many. <laughs> to be honest, until now, I can say that maybe it's just maybe it's just starting, so I don't really feel it yet. <laughs> so it's quite a fair number as of now. Okay. But I can say Good that luck, the girl. invitation. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I can say that the invitations are mostly no, not mostly, but only from AMSA Indonesia. Even my own chapter, we do not have this practice. I think it's something very common. I think because I never received anything from AMSA Taiwan. I think we have the same culture. We don't invite, <laughs> I can say. It's like, you know, even though I'm in AMSA International, but there's this thing, people feel like AMSA International is somewhere else. And then, okay, so I don't think that you have to be involved. It's okay. I know who is the OC. I know who, who are they. Okay, that's all enough. So, I, <laughs> but, you know, maybe you can invite us. I don't know. Am I promoting? But... <laughs> If you want us to introduce AMSA International to your chapter or to your university, like AMSA Indonesia, welcome. Maybe it can pull more people to be in AMSA International. We need variety as well, guys. Yes, in AMSA International. Okay, thank you so much. And that wraps up our panel discussion session. Woo! Clap. And one hour is out. We are four minutes behind schedule, but we will now open to Q and A session. We will shorten it to ten minutes. <laughs> so, are there any questions from the floor? Okay, come on, come on, don't be shy. We have a few new members. I can see, especially Amsa Macau. Yes, we have Amsa Macau with us. Anyone wants to ask anything? Everyone is shy, that's the thing. You know, when you're outside international, everyone is shy. And then when in chapter level, everyone is so talkative. <laughs> Same thing in my chapter as well, guys. 
Okay. Um, if there are no questions, <laughs> then I will ask one. Lol. Okay. So um, maybe to Amsa Indonesia first. So how do you guys cope with COVID? Amsa with COVID, how is it going well? Like for <laughs> this past few months with COVID? Okay, Aneta will answer this. Okay. <laughs> yes, Neta. Okay, so um, thank you for the uh, question, uh, Marjorie. So as we know, Amsa Indonesia has five national events. And since the very first national event that got struck with COVID and had to be postponed, we've been adapting uh, it to be conducted online. So I guess um, uh, where actually this national event is usually a very big event whereby all the universities gather uh, offline. All the 36 members I'm sorry of 36 I'm sorry, university members and however um, I guess uh, I believe that here because we're an organization that functions on a national level it is very difficult for us in normal circumstances to gather physically together so we can only have those five opportunities so previously it was very difficult for us to have new ideas new innovations like for example projects to do together or like upgradings for our members and so on and so forth so we believe that actually so personally in this 10 year 2020 2021 we actually believe that um, even though we have all these limitations due to COVID, there's actually a lot of potentials that we can see as well because uh, we've been more exposed to platforms like Zoom and so on and so forth. So gathering our members, our 36 universities, is actually much easier this uh, in this era right now compared to um, previously. So um, there are a lot of things that we're initiating this 10 year. For example, we're initiating a national division gathering that provides opportunities for members to share, discuss, and receive upgrading from Ansa Indonesia as well. So this could, this wouldn't have been able to, to be done if it uh, were in, in normal circumstances. And we're also expanding opportunities in terms of research, academic, and also in each of the divisions in AMSA Indonesia. And we're also adapting the work programs, uh, existing work programs to be conducted online. For example, AMSA Indonesia has a very big community outreach event called Event of the Year, which is usually a competition between AMSA universities. But here with the online world and so on and so forth, we see a potential that uh, we can actually have more inter-university collaborations as well. So that's something that we're really initiating this tenure. So we hope that our members can get more opportunities and more experiences that they haven't been able to receive. So personally, we're quite optimistic, even though we're living in a whole new world. <laughs> but there's a lot of new potential, I think. Thank you. I hope it answers. Yes, <laughs> yes Neta, you answered the question. Thank you so much. It, it is a, there are lots of pros and cons during this COVID, actually. I can say uh, we have, we in Anza International, we can't have physical conferences. We can't meet you guys physically. But you know what? Cost is reduced because it's online. And <laughs> we, well, we get to see people that we never see before. Just imagine, because when it's a physical conference, we can't have a, a virtual option. And we will never get to see anyone that is actually attending. But this time, you see, wow, I can get, I can meet all of you. So I'm really impressed with this COVID doing all this magical wonders. OK, so how about I'm so Taiwan. I know that you guys have zero local case for a really long time. So how have you guys been coping throughout this whole pandemic? Um, so since the pandemic in Taiwan is medicated, so actually we are still having uh, like physical um, uh, workshops or programs, but uh, in this tenure, we have more inter-university activities. Uh, like um, if we, uh, like uh, universities from Northern Taiwan and universities from uh, Middle Taiwan, they can have uh, separate uh, activities in order to prevent like too many peoples are uh, crossing uh, the county. And uh, that is also, uh, uh, used to deal with the COVID uh, outbreak. And we ha also have virtual workshops like the virtual academic competitions in uh, March, in April. And uh, uh, the recent activity in AMSA Taiwan is the AMSA week. And during the AMSA week, we introduced AMSA International, uh, introduced the MC, EMC, and introduced uh, the annual working plan of AMSA Taiwan to let uh, more universities to understand what we are doing during the pandemic. And I think it is quite uh, useful for promotion. Like we have our own Instagram story filter and I think people are uh, really fond of it. So that is a great uh, promotion we have done uh, recently. 
Yes, I agree. I was fond of it as well. And congratulations on your Instagram account. <laughs> yes. Okay, so any other questions from the floor? Come on, come on, guys. It's now or never. We won't have another membership for a national level masterclass again this uh, throughout this whole tenure. Any questions? Any questions maybe from our new baby, Amsama Kao? Okay, everyone is quiet. I don't like when it's quiet, it's so awkward. Okay, never mind. I will ask another question. <laughs> so um uh hold on. Okay, so what are the do's and don'ts when recruiting? I think um with the pandemic going on, actually everyone is very overwhelmed. Um personally and also like I hear many friends are very overwhelmed as in like mentally psychosocially and um, physical distancing has been putting everyone at isolation so um, how has it actually affected your recruitment and how have you actually managed to overcome the recruitment per se maybe we can start with I'm saying Indonesia first as Arneta is the one who is opening the <laughs> recruitment or probably Arneta will be the one who answered this Okay, neta, neta. <laughs> okay, um, thank you, uh, Kyle Piran. Thank you, uh, Marjorie. I'd like to reconfirm. So the question is regarding uh, recruitment. And I'd like to reconfirm the question. In this tenure. Oh, uh, recruitment. Yeah. Okay, do's and don'ts. Okay. So for AMSA Indonesia, we have two systems uh, when it comes to um, recruiting new member universities. It's either we approach our member universities actively. So AMSA Indonesia is the one that approaches the university. Hey, do you guys want to make an AMSA? Things like that. Or it's um, done passively. I think for this tenure, um, we're not going to be approaching our members actively in an active manner because we believe that it's quite difficult to establish a university, uh, a new organization within a university to become stable in this current condition. Uh, therefore, uh, we're, however, it doesn't mean that we're gonna limit ourselves from taking um, member universities that are interested to become part of AMSA, uh, AMSA Indonesia. And I think for the um, do's and don'ts and things uh, like that. So I think uh, one of the things that is that we can learn from, uh, that I think we can share from AMSA Indonesia is that we have a university uh, that will kind of advise and kind of uh, look after the observer university. So that's been a pretty good system because the university that wants to become a part of AMSA can directly learn from a senior university that has um, success successfully conducted um, the work as well. And from what we do, um, usually we invite the AMSA university that is interested to become a part of AMSA Indonesia to attend uh, national events. So they get a glimpse of what AMSA is like what are the activities, what programs, and in an offline situation, they can they have a lot of opportunities to really share and discuss with the representatives of local universities. I think, uh, I hope that answers your question, Marjorie. Yes, it does. Okay, so how about Amsa Taiwan do's and don'ts? What do you encourage people and what you should avoid to not say or do during recruitment? Um. Can, uh, uh, sorry, Marjorie, can you just repeat your question? I don't, I didn't <laughs> okay, just, it. just to make it simple, do's and don'ts during recruitment, especially during this pandemic. <laughs> okay, um, do's and don'ts. So uh, actually, uh, I'll share another uh, experience first. So um, AMSEP is a major access for our member to know AMSA and to participate in AMSA activity. But due to the pandemic, most MSEP are postponed and even canceled. So uh, that means that many students do not have the easiest access to know about AMSA Taiwan and AMSA International. So actually, uh, this year, the application we received about uh, the NEB decreased quite dramatically. So um, I think that, uh, again, promotion is really important because uh, people may want to know about uh, this organization, but they don't have the access or they are just too lazy to um, to gain access to the organization. So uh, actually we have the MSA week and several uh, new promotion platforms for this year. And I, uh, I don't think I have uh, too many thoughts about the do's and don'ts because we just don't have enough application this year. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. I think every 
most of the chapters actually suffered a lot from applications this tenure because of the pandemic and everyone is so overwhelmed. And okay, there's, there's this one question from Elaine. So from AMSA China, suggested timelines for member recruitment at AMSA International EB recruitment. Okay, so AMSA International, uh, <laughs> I will answer that first. So, um, because we never really had a proper regeneration system, I will be very, very honest with you. And the voting goes underground. And then after that, um, a few weeks later, you receive an email announcing who is the OC. <laughs> and then the whole board just comes out like that. So um, I personally think that uh, regeneration is something that we are trying to work on. And it is very important and that we have to focus on it. And that's why we're actually enforcing it through our constitution. And for this upcoming regeneration, we will start from May and we will wrap it up at about July during AMC. So it will be very transparent. Um, I hope that um, <laughs> Suki has actually shared the new constitution draft. And so you can check it out for that context of AMSA International. And so for national level, maybe I will pass to AMSA Indonesia, AMSA Taiwan to answer uh, this question. Maybe Elvira first? Yeah, sure. or thank you Marjorie. Yeah. So the suggested timeline for member recruitment, um, for me, it would probably be the whole tenure. Yeah, that's all, the whole tenure. So uh, in, in every month, uh, we could actively or passively searching for all the members that could possibly join AMSA. Well, that's true, actually. But, oh my God, it's so tired to preach to everyone sometimes, <laughs> right? You can start by sending emails probably to faculty of medicine, to all faculty of medicine, just uh, bless the email to all faculty of medicine. And then, yeah, let's see what happens next. Okay, that's a nice one. Thank you so much, Avira. How about I'm so Taiwan? Um, so the recruitment will be uh, the, uh, during the whole year, but uh, actually we, we hope that they uh, like uh, they join us like as early as possible, like in the early like at the very start of our tenure, and that will help us to set local coordinators in these members. And uh, that will be more convenient, but we don't have restrictions for member recruitment, so they can join whenever they want uh, if they just fulfill all the documents and all the requirements. But there's something that we have to learn. Okay, so I, <laughs> I can say that everything is starting, I mean, it has to start early. So uh, I hereby AMSA International invite everyone to actually um you know venture further national don't be shy everyone is welcome when we open for recruitment later please try and apply and join us okay so that wraps up the q a session and right now we will have a five minute break i thank all of our panelists so so much and after the five minute break we will proceed with the sgd session so um just uh, head for your toilet and anything and then we will come back in five. See you guys. Break is enough to recharge yourself after the first part of the session. So the second part of the session today will be a small group discussion or SGD. We will try to apply what we learned during our panel discussion earlier to commonly encountered scenarios or dilemmas in managing membership at member or chapter level. So here are the um, instructions for the SGD. So Maul, our Director of Membership and Development, membership, will help to assign everyone to the breakout rooms. Here are the links to the case scenarios for each group. So please take note of them. The link will be redistributed later after everyone has entered the breakout rooms. But you can also take a screenshot of this slide if you want to. Maul, uh, to the next slide, please. Yes. Please make sure everyone is given a chance to contribute to the discussion. As we are short on manpower, we do not have enough facilitators per group. Per group. But four of us, 
two panelists and uh, Maul and I, we will try to roam around and help you guys out. However, we believe in you guys and we believe you'll be able to come up with some creative and innovative solutions to the scenarios. Our panelists will stay in the main room, so not to worry if you need any guidance and we will also roam around. So again, groups do not need to come up with a slight presentation, but if you choose to do so, uh, we won't stop you. So we will encourage uh, participants to use Google Slides if you want to. Does anyone have any questions or clarifications regarding the instructions? Okay, it is quite straightforward. And uh, these scenarios are actually based on my personal experience. <laughs> so I hope that you will actually learn greatly from all of them. Um, and yeah, I learned a lot from all of these past uh, scenarios and I hope to see your answers in a bit. So Maul will be assigning all of you into their groups. Uh, please wait for a moment. So you'll be given 15 minutes to discuss, yeah? Please uh, check out, um, Just you can just open all of the scenarios if you guys want to know what I have encountered <laughs> in the past two years, three years. So all of these scenarios are real life situations. Um, hi everyone. So I've uh, made the breakout rooms. So soon I will open the rooms. As have been mentioned by Madri, uh, the, uh, the discussion will take around 15 minutes. And then after the discussion we're done, I'm going to close the room and uh, everyone should back to the main room uh, for the planarization. So I will open the room now. So for the group presentations, I'll be flashing the given SGT scenarios on a screen. When your group number is called, the group representative should use the raise hand function and I'll call on them to share their group's answer. So again, when your group number is called, the representative must use the raise hand feature and they'll be called to present. So let's take a look at SGD scenario one. Okay, so imagine you, as the regional chairperson of AMSA X, the setting is set in February 2020 and COVID-19 has hit all other AMSA members gravely. However, Force Major is not declared under AMSA International by the overall chairperson just yet. How will you reassure your members on the impending events, such as but not limited to AMSEP with AMSA Z and the National Medical Olympics? Okay, if this is repeated in your chapter, how will you respond to it? So group one, who will be presenting? So Adawiya? Uh, okay, <laughs> so, well, actually our group didn't have the time to um, discuss this scenario because we didn't get to open the link and discuss it. So, um, it's, um. so what I'm going to say is basically just uh, my own opinion, we don't really get to discuss. So, if um uh, if if uh, I were to face this kind of problem, I think the first uh thing that I'm gonna do is I will do uh, an emergency meeting with all the uh committee members this of the society to uh discuss what we can do uh to uh and to find the solution together because more brains is better than one I think. Mm. Okay, that's true. And there's another very interesting individual in group one. Thank you so much, Adawiya. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> it's quite sad because if you guys can't open the link, you should have informed us earlier. Yeah. But it's no, okay. We, we get the link. <laughs> but then the time already limit and we were forced out from the breakout room. So yeah. Uh okay, it's okay. I will we deeply apologize for that. Okay, so I see that we also have the deal MND of AMSA Indonesia in group one. So maybe um, Felicia, <laughs> will you, um, how would you tackle this issue if you're facing this scenario? Okay, um, hello everyone. My name is Felicia. I am from AMSA Indonesia, uh, the Secretary of Friendship and Development for the senior. 
um, for this issue uh, regarding the force measure that is not yet declared by the Ampers National, first of all, um, we will uh, wait first for the instructions from the AMSA International regarding the force major uh, announcement. And then uh, regarding to our other work programs that um, that are we uh, that we are currently projecting for our tenure, uh, we are going to adapt it uh, virtually so that we can also uh, plan it out uh, throughout this tenure. Um, we will plan it out uh, as um, it will be conducted through uh, virtually. So not offline, it will be held uh, adapting because of this pandemic so that we will uh, conduct every single work program virtually for this tenure. Maybe that's what from me. Um, any other members? <laughs> okay. So I do agree on both points. I think that um, both have different values and different pros and cons per se. But if you ask me on a legislative point of view, uh, uh, by the way, we apologize because our panelists are not back yet. But if you ask me from my point of view, um, I will actually uh, ask or request all of you to actually reconsider legislative measures because different uh, chapters, different countries, they have different measures and different, um, I, I can say, different modus operandi to actually tackle COVID per se. Some chap some you ch countries or chapters, they um, may not um, put a national lockdown at a point of time. Some already do. So it depends on your country at a point of time. So in February 2020, not all of the countries are actually in lockdown. Not every country actually has COVID. So it depends. And definitely you will have to know what are the priorities at a point of time, which one comes first, which one comes second, even though the notice or announcement from the overall chairperson is different. is It may be delayed, but prioritize your own chapter's members first. That is the whole um, purpose of this masterclass is to teach you and to educate you on your national level management to um, to put your members above everything else their safety and um, uh, their well-being their welfare above everything else and that is um, I think that is the main focus for this scenario and definitely after that, uh, reassure them with that uh, this cannot happen and we need to further discuss like what you said, uh, like what Felicia said, to actually adapt it into something virtual. So I, I can see that many chapters are actually doing it, uh, doing a really great job for converting everything into something virtual. And yeah, so well said and congratulations to first group. And I see that Elvira is back. Yes, Elvira, do you have any comments or Jimmy? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I am very agree with you, um, Marjorie, and probably the decision that we made must be in line with faculty of medicine in your respective um, countries and also the universities uh, and also the government in the area. Yes, thank you so much, Avira. How about Jimmy? Um, I think that setting out the stop loss point is really important, which means that by a certain time, you should make a, a final decision, no matter the force major is to, to, uh, declared or not, because you wouldn't want your members to wait for the decision forever. And uh, I quite agree with Marjorie that prioritizing your member first is really important. So whether you want to shift the activity into a uh, virtual activity or you want to postpone it or even just cancel it right away, but you have to like make the decisions and inform your members like directly. Yes, thank you so much, Jimmy, for the reassurance. Okay, so I think that even though uh, we had a little technical issue for group one earlier, but you guys did a great job by answering on the spot just now. So thank you so much. Okay. So next for the second scenario. Okay, imagine you as the regional chairperson of AMSA Y, you have a member that is keen to run for the upcoming regeneration of AMSA International. So you have to write a, 
LOR for him. However, according to the local coordinator or representative of his AMSA University, he has been slacking in his previous role held in his AMSA University board with reasons as such. Number one, overwhelming AMSA workload. Number two, ongoing professional exams. Number three, family commitments. So would you write a LOR for him? Assuming that you never know him before this, how will you respond to this issue? If this is repeated in your chapter, how will you respond to it? So anyone from group two? Do you want me to call out names again? Oh my God, guys, don't make me call out names. <laughs> uh, someone just uh, raised their hand. Uh, oh, okay. How do I? Okay, so yes, yes, from Amsemaka. Hi guys. Okay, Hi. so the plan we discussed is that we will first try to meet with the candidate in person because there is a possibility that the coordinator's claims might be exaggerated. And then to make sure that the candidate is actually fit to run for the position, besides reviewing his CV, we will also put him on a probation period, like doing some minor tasks related to his position. And finally, um, if his problem is actually with time commitments, we'll try to make him write a timetable for his future schedule just to make sure he has enough time to do all these commitments. If I missed okay. anything, other, other members can also speak up. Well, that is a very model answer. <laughs> okay, so uh, any other input from any other member? And thank you so much. Anyone else? Or is that a cumulative uh, voice from your team? I think that was a cumulative. She covered all the points. <laughs> OK, thank you so much. OK, so I will pass it to our panelists to give their uh, comments. Jimmy? Uh, my answer is quite similar to uh, uh, the previous one like i will try my best to understand uh this person's situation personally and should this person is like uh he or she actually slack during uh, his previous job then uh, i i won't write a letter of recommendation for him and personally i will recommend this person to take part in national activities first or other international activities that do not require a letter of recommendation Well, that's nice. <laughs> okay, so how about Elvira? Will you do the same? Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, it's actually quite similar, but actually um, in Amsa Indonesia, to ensure that uh, every candidate that we send to Amsa International would be the best candidate for Amsa International, we always conduct a pre-interview, pre a pre-internal interview, and in it, uh, we, we always make sure that if we heard that kind of problems, we make sure that it, is it uh, the real problems or not. And also, um, probably I will seek for another additional um, information regarding the problems about this candidate before. And um, if it's true or near true, then I would recommend him with with uh, with uh, also listed all of the the problems in the recommendation letter so that Amsa International would consider him but would know that he is that kind of person, he or she is that kind of person. So um, the recommendation would not be like, I, I highly recommend, but uh, also uh, I I don't really, I, 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 I quite recommend this person, uh, but you have to know that blah, 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 blah. And probably Amsa International uh, would have a further interview and then would have its own consideration regarding this person. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much, Evira. So will you reveal the LOR that you wrote for him to him? No, of course not. Because okay. it is sent directly to Amsa International. But I would okay. become very, uh, as objective as I can. Okay, that is another good point. Okay, thank you so much, Avira. Okay, so I hope that the answers shared earlier can actually inspire you if you ever face this scenario in the future. <laughs> okay, next scenario, please. So scenario three, 
imagine you as the vice chairperson internal slash vice president internal slash regional chairperson of AMSA Z. It has been two months since the first recruitment call and you are yet to recruit a director of information and technology or other position of similar significance, aka the one that is running your website. To run your, uh, so moreover, no one else in the NEB is skilled to run the website. So how would you tackle this issue? If this is repeated in your chapter, how will you respond to it? So anyone from group three? Hello, I'm the representative Hi. from group three. Hi, Ruby. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ruby from Macau. So we have a really similar situation uh, that we just encountered in MSA Macau. So uh, first of all, I want to say that the name of the title Director of Information and Technology is so frightened to most of the medical students. They, they think that uh, they cannot handle both medical issues and the technology issues. So, uh, so we changed the title names into um, Director of Promotions and Development. But actually, they have to manage the website as well. But um, for our team, we come to three approaches, despite the title of the names. Uh, the first approach is that we can seek help from NSA International. So, so uh, basically, that's what I do. Um, uh, I think his name is Tan, Tan, Tasnim, right? The yes, N Tasnim. Tasnim, yeah, we start, um, and he actually helped us to set up the website from the uh, WordPress, which is really good for us to manage the rest of the website, yeah. And second approach is that we can reach out the help that is not limited to MSA members. We can seek help from other departments that are relevant to IT in the universities, in other universities, is fine as well. So after they set up the back end server side, we can manage, manage the rest of the, like designing the website. Yeah, and so the final approach that we might not to come up to this step is to use our funds <laughs> to outsourcing and engineers. Yeah, that's uh, what we have come up so far. Thank you. Yes, very feasible and viable points. Thank you so much, Group 3. <laughs> okay, so I'll pass it to Elvira. What are your thoughts about this? Thank you. Thank you, Ruby. I think I am very agree with you. Um, for for Angry Ninja itself, so we don't have uh, this position as the Director of Information and Technology in Angsa Indonesia. And we only have the Secretary for Publication and Promotion to carry out this, this program. So uh, maybe we could collaborate with external parties in order to yeah, help the website and also the everything else that you need to be helped. Thank you. Yes, I agree. <laughs> but definitely, if we are to collaborate with external parties, money is to be discussed again. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Avira. So how about Amsa Taiwan? Have you guys faced this before? Um, not actually, but uh, since we have uh, the regulation that previous NEB have the responsibility to fulfill the handover until his or her tenure officially ends. So. Um, I think it would be mandatory for the previous director of IT to do an ad interim until the next NEB is elected and after the handover to his successor. But uh, should your chapter don't have such regulation, uh, I think maybe you can, like, you have to keep open for the next call, like you don't have the choice, or maybe you can uh, distribute the work of DOIT into other departments, but that won't be a good choice because every department have their own workload before. And maybe you can just seek for external collaboration like other engineers or MSA International for assistance. Mm, that is very true. I, I totally agree. And I like the idea of like that person has to act in turn, but I don't know if it is feasible at MSA International. I think I have to discuss with my team, but that is a good point I never thought about. Thank you so much, Jimmy. So I hope that the answers uh, and also the experiences shared can actually benefit all of our audience here today. So next uh, scenario, please. 
Okay, so scenario four, you have a NEB colleague, not of your chapter's nationality, showing this agreement to a collaboration with another chapter, Answer X, made by a regional chairperson. The collaboration is on an upcoming event for sexual education awareness. Country X is currently at war with the country of where your colleague originates from. As a colleague in the NEB, how will you advise your colleague? If your colleague insists on a resignation due to the issue, how will you tackle this issue? Uh, this is something, I think <laughs> this is the most difficult scenario out of all. Okay, so who will be presenting? Group four? Um, I think it's Dr. Avi. I can't yeah, uh, see the raise hand. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, I Hi, Marjorie. Hi, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, you're audible. Hi, how's everyone doing? Uh, so first of all, I think all these questions are uh, such a brainstorming kind of a thing and something that I think we might be really tackling someday or at least the future of AMSA will be. So thank you for these. This specific question, I think I've, we've tried to combine four points from different perspectives. Uh, so let me just start with it. First point is that uh, when we apply or we are appointed as someone who holds an international office, I think we at the very moment should be told or this should be tested that your personal biases are kept aside. I mean, you are holding an international office, right? And sometimes that needs to be informed to, uh, to the other person. No one is going to say in an interview that, oh, I have, I don't, I have personal biases, don't appoint me, right? This is something that needs to be uh, made clear so that it's in their head. Uh, the second point is that IFMSA is itself an international organization and AMSA International is an international organization which stresses upon being non-political, right? Uh, so that is one ideal we strive to be. And uh, at the end of the day, since it might be two different AMSA chapters, but it's, it's AMSA at the end of the day, right? So that needs to be considered. Thirdly, Yes, being at a war might be a reasonable uh, justification for not going ahead with a, a collaboration in terms of uh, the members are themselves citizens of the different countries. There might be a national uh, situation that might have to be considered. But at the same time, that does not mean that the representatives of the two organizations cannot communicate this to the other person. It's not that the people who are representing to the two organizations are at war with each other. Uh, but the last point, I think, which is the most important point, I feel, is uh, that any international office holder, especially at such a position, has to simultaneously do two jobs. You have to obviously represent yourself, your personal opinion, because you deserve to. But at the same time, you represent a lot of people. Um, for example, if I am the VOC of India, I represent 30 state heads. And in a way, I represent 5,000 members. How fair is it for me to take a decision which is just based on my opinion? Because they won't get a chance to cite their opinion, right? And sometimes what happens, we are all inclined towards going with our personal choices. So a conscious effort has to be made to make you feel or feel yourself that uh, your decision has to be uh, representative of a lot of people. And that is why I think the picture of the team comes into play. It's not just one person in the national executive board. It's a team of people, right? You have to consciously remind if someone is going ahead with a resignation, you can remind them to think of it from both the perspectives. Yes, if professionally also the answer comes out for the person to be a no that I don't want to continue with it, I think it's personally justified enough. But uh, I think uh, a lot of times what will happen is you might have a different personal opinion that I want to resign because of this reason. But when you professionally consider your responsibility, you might actually consider to stay. And that is a very delicate balance. I think uh, all international office holders should ideally strive to make, make out somehow. So I think that was a little concrete slash abstract answer, if that helps. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Avi. But in this context, it's more of like your colleague is insisting on it, even though he has already 
he might actually say, oh, no, I don't have any political issue. Oh, no, nothing. I'm, I'm willing to contribute to your chapter already. I'm signing up for this. But then, and then halfway through, all of a sudden, oh, no, you actually agreed to this country, aka chapter that actually is having war with my country slash chapter. And yeah, so that's the thing. Sometimes people mm -hmm. can just change <laughs> halfway yeah. through. Yeah, but anyway, thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the points that your team has already made up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marjorie. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Jimmy, what are your thoughts on this? Um, honestly, a similar situation happened in AMSA Taiwan during the um, anti-extradition law movement in Hong Kong last year. And uh, it was a really tough decision, but uh, but as the RC and since AMSA Taiwan is an NGO, so the stance of the organization should not only stand for the individuals in this organization, but we should stand for the entity it's uh, our rep uh, we represent. So uh, from my perspective, I will try my best to understand why this colleague don't want to collaborate with this chapter. And I'll further discuss with the NEB and the final decision whether we will collaborate with this MSA chapter will be based on the organizational stance. So uh, personally, I think we have to stand firm on the stance your MSA chapter have. And uh, after communicating with this colleague, if he or she insists on resignation, I think I would just ask this colleague to properly hand over his work if he or she insists. Okay. <laughs> yes, well said, Jimmy. Okay, how about Elvira? Personally, I want to ask, um, what kind of war is happening right here? What kind of war? Um, yeah, and also, what <laughs> was the reason of the disagreement? And maybe after that, we can together search for the way out of this war or something that's happening. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Personally, I, 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 I think that we have to sit together and then uh, with have a discussion with an open heart so that we can really know what was in their mind and what was in our mind and we could have a really good discussion. And again, back to the disagreement. Uh, back to the agreement. Um, if it's better to to cancel the agreement, then yeah, probably that's the best way. But if we can still continue, why not? Thank you. Thank you so much, Evira. And um, if for AMSA International, if we ever have anyone like that in the board, <laughs> we will highly encourage uh, he or she to resign. If not, then we will have to go harsh with a termination. Because like what Jimmy say, we are an NGO. We are non-political. We have no stance. We are neutral per se. And we all come from different backgrounds. And we can't just say, uh, because you have something with this chapter or this country and that we are not proceeding, but we are thinking for the benefits of everyone. In, we have already considered all of the aspects before agreeing. So um, I think <laughs> so that's how we would tackle the issue from Amazon International. Anyway, thank you so much to Elvira and Jimmy for your thoughts on this scenario. Okay, so that wraps up our SGD presentation session. Woo! Okay, so... <laughs> Lastly, we will proceed with an ending. So that's it with our very first masterclass. A second masterclass session is the first one for membership. Tomorrow, there'll be another one on university level. So I would like to thank all of you for being here today. It really means a lot. Today is kind of like a brain grilling session, I can say. And of course, we will have to appreciate our panelists for today. Thank you so much for being here. So next slide, please, Mel. So we present to you two certificates from AMSA International. From the bottom of our heart, we are really, really grateful. And we wish for both chapters to continue striving and do your best in this tenure. We are watching you guys. <laughs> thank you. And thank you so much, Avira. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Avira. I actually heard that uh, you are in your final year or you finished. Yeah? Yeah, I am now in my final year. 
you're in your final year okay so you're most senior i think all of <laughs> all of us here today same age same age oh yeah same age okay you don't need to tell that out loud okay thank you so so um Mao will be our photographer okay okay i'm gonna do the countdown three two one <laughs> Okay, bye-bye everyone. <laughs> okay, that was random. Okay, thank you so much, Jimmy. Dear people of tomorrow, we warmly welcome our participants to our second session of Masterclass titled Managing Membership in AMSA International. I am Maul, the Director of Membership and Development AMSA International, and I will be your MC for today. Joining us today are regional chairpersons, representatives from each chapter's National Executive Board, and two other members from each chapter. Before we start today's session, as the Director of Membership and Development, the membership relevant, I would like to explain a little bit about the session. So AMSA International Masterclass is a program that we're meant to help our chapters to develop themselves. We will provide chapters uh, with hard skills and soft skills that will be needed uh, in order to uh, ensure the development of each chapter. In today's session, uh, we will have a discussion and also small group discussion uh, with our panelists uh, in related to the membership uh, management in the university level. With that, let's proceed to the first part of our session on managing membership in AMSA. Um, next slide, please. Another one. So here are the rules for panel discussion for today. I will be acting as the moderator and the format of the discussion will be as follows. For the first 60 minutes, the panelists will answer pre-formulated questions, some of which were sent in by participants through the registration form. Each question will be flashed on the screen and read aloud by the moderator. Questions will cover different aspects of the conference from general to committee specific questions. Each question does not need to be answered by both panelists except for the questions under the general category. The moderator will direct a question to one panelist. Another panelist may also give his or her answers to the question if they have a different perspective or additional information to share. Lastly, participants may type follow-up questions or additional questions using the chat feature of Zoom. You may also raise your hand if you would like to verbalize your question instead. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce our panelists for today, who are kind enough to share some of their time and expertise with us today. Uh, our first panelist is uh, Chen Sai Ling, known as Charlene. Uh, she was the local coordinator of uh, Changkung University, Taiwan 2019-2020. Uh, and currently, she is the National Director of AMSEP Taiwan 2020-2021. Charlene, you may say hi to everyone. Hi, I'm Charlene. <laughs> nice to meet you all. Thank okay. you, Charlene. And our second panelist is Muhammad Alifian Ramifta Putra, or known as Alif. He was the representative of AMSA Universitas Indonesia 2019-2020. And he has currently become the advisory board of AMSA Universitas Indonesia 2020-2021 and associate editor of review research of J AMSA, AMSA International 2020-2021. Alif, you may want to say hi. Okay, thanks, Mao. Hello, everyone. My name is Alif, and yeah, I come from Universitas Indonesia. Nice to meet you all. Thank you so much, Alif. Uh, without further ado, let's begin the discussion. The time now is uh, 15 and four minutes, GMT plus eight. We will proceed with the panel discussion for around 60 minutes. Uh, for our first question, this is under the general category, so both panelists must answer. Uh, how do AMSA International and AMSA member assist your leadership in AMSA University? Uh, for this question, uh, Probably we can start from Charlene. Okay. Um, well, I had no links to AMSA International when I was the local coordinator in the last 10 years. So I'll just focus on and share how AMSA Taiwan has assisted me in leadership. Okay. Okay. Um, though Taiwan is really tiny and we have about around like 15 medical apartments only, including Chinese medicine department. It's a vibrant and vigorous island. Because we are small, it's kind of easy to gather all the, all the universities together. So we have 
several events that are held to gather all the universities and the representatives of the uh, the universities together every every year. Yeah, and the most um, there are two activities that uh, that is that was the most memorable for me. One is the cadre training. We have the cadre training in at the beginning or the end of the semester, and um, the national officers will present how to utilize all the resources we have in hand. For example, like uh, we can what apps and skills we can have um, to tackle the thorny situation led by COVID-19 and how we can work smoothly with our partners in this new tenure. And it was not a super serious activity. Actually, we went on a vacation, two day vacation together for and have fun and have leadership level obsessions intertwined in a trip. And the other one is the mini MSIC. It's a winter camp held also by uh, AMSA Taiwan, those national officers around February to gather all the medical students all over Taiwan to learn the issues of the upcoming MSIC in the summer and have fun, of course. And for me, it was a really great opportunity to observe and participate in organizing a big camp because people are from all over Taiwan and learn how to be a leader with, when your partners come from different schools and backgrounds. And also, I, I found AMSA Taiwan a really warm um, organization through this mini AMSIC because it was when I started to have uh, interest in running for the director of AMSEP in this tenure. So um, my conclusion is that uh, I actively joined events held by AMSA Taiwan. So it, it, it enabled me to gain a bigger picture of how, our, how a larger organization works and meet people from a diverse background and kind of get a um, insight of future life because uh, I can meet many future colleagues. Yes, that's my okay. answer. <laughs> yeah, that's a very clear answer, Jalin. Thank you so much. Uh, probably Alif uh, want to share his opinion regarding this question. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mao. So also thank you, Charlene. So I would like to share some of my experience regarding how like AMSA International and AMSA member assist my uh, during my leadership in AMSA University. So first of all, I believe that even if AMSA International doesn't give a direct help in leading my AMSA University, but I believe AMSA International has been consistent in providing many opportunities for AMSA University to join. For instance, the competition such as World Immunization, Immunization Week and also World Diabetes Awareness Month and many others have been essentially developed my members and I highly encourage all of my members to join many AMSA international events, especially is AMC and AMC as we know, it is both our prod and also conference that we always waiting for. And second of all, an aspect on how AMSA member or AMSA chapter, in this case is AMSA Indonesia, actually, AMSA Indonesia is cons consisting of 36 AMSA universities, so it's quite a lot. And remembering our geographical areas in which that we have, uh, we have thousands of islands and we have uh, separates by distance, by a long distance. So it is quite challenging in order to maintain the communication. However, we have uh, tried to tackle down. And I believe that during my leadership as one of the representatives from 36 total of representatives in uh, AMSA universities in Indonesia. It's by it's been a, qu a quite good journey. We established a good relationship between AMSA Indonesia and all 36 AMSA universities in Indonesia. Actually, in AMSA Indonesia, we divide 36 AMSA university into six main districts, and we have many national teams that also help each of the representative in their AMSA university. For instance, we have uh, the position called as the AMSA elite chairperson. So AMSA elite chairperson is someone that dedicated to bridge the communication between AMSA Indonesia and AMSA university in each district. So it is really helpful in connecting between the national levels and the university levels. So I think that's one of the way how exactly AMSA chapter helping the AMSA university in developing their AMSA University. And there are other national teams such as the 
we know there is uh, in Indonesia we call it as academic team, research team, and many others that also uh, being really helpful in developing the AMSA University. So I think that's the contribution of AMSA International and also AMSA Indonesia in helping in AMSA University. Thank you. Okay, that was a detailed uh, explanation on how both chapters uh, can bring the leadership to the AMSA University. Uh, I think for this one, we may proceed to the next question. So how do you introduce AMSA and its culture, especially to freshmen? And how do you encourage them to join uh, AMSA? Uh, for this one, I think Alif may start first. Okay, thank you, Mao, for the questions. So first of all, uh, in Universitas Indonesia, as the first year medical student, we cannot directly join an organization. So in the first semester, we need to join faculty orientation before we actually join the organization in the second semester of the first year. So in this first semester, because we still not being able to join an organization, the main focus of AMSA Universitas Indonesia is to maintain our publication and exposure as extensive as we can. So we do many things such as to publish our achievement, to publish our updates of our event consistently in social media, such as our Instagram, our website, and many others media and not only that we also provide opportunities for freshmen to join as a committee in our event for example in community service event we have uh, open recruitment for freshmen that we that want to become a committee to have known amsa better and also in the amsa program committee and we also held an academic training that invite freshmen also to become participants. Thus, we're able to introduce AMSA and its culture to them in a comprehensive manner, even before they officially join us as a member. And further, after they able to join AMSA as a full member, we provide them a sort of orientation that can introduce some sighting. That's all for me. Okay, thank you so much, Alif. Uh, probably we may proceed with Charlene. Uh, do you have probably like similar idea on how it's implemented in AMSA Taiwan? Um, actually, yes, we have. We also have many kinds of activities that um, get all the new medical students to get involved in this. But I want to add more uh, about the university level stuff we have got. We have done in Chang'e University, and so like how we go, how we going how we are going to. Uh, encourage them to uh, join AMSA events. For freshmen, I think it can be divided into three parts. Um, before in, in enrollment of a university, and the second one is the homecoming day, and the third part will be during the semester. Um, for the before enrol enrollment part, um, because all the seniors like us will create a group, like Facebook group, um, to involve them uh, into uh, this department and it's also for for them to introduce themselves and also it's a great platform for all the seniors to promote their clubs and activities etc and for LCs like us we usually schedule a sharing session at the first or second week of semester so our job before the enrollment of freshmen is to make a beautiful like e-poster or many information on the media to share it in a group and put pictures in a group and tell briefly tell them what we are doing and why it is fun to join us. Uh, the particip particip uh, the medical students, the freshmen are uh, can join EMSA um, at, as soon as they enter the university. Yes, and we also like give snacks as motivation for them to join our um, sharing session. And the next part will be the homecoming day. And it's like in the first week of our uh, enrollment. And it's a day for all seniors to meet the freshmen and promote their business in a physical way. So like we are divided into many groups. For example, AMSA is put into the international affair group and we prepare slides with photos and um, many previous events and often we post like stupid and cute photos and crazily propagandize AMSA. And again, to emphasize, uh, there will be a sharing session of AMSA and then they can join. And after 
the homecoming day is the semester part, and then we will post, post, and post because there are many activities held by AMSA,、um, either international or national. So we will post a lot of、um, information to them. Like we often share it、uh, through、um, our fan page or、uh, the group we have created with our、uh, seniors and freshmen, and. We often make our words with enthusiasm, and I think picture is really, really important because、uh, we can it can be visualized by the freshmen, and they can see how and what we are we are really doing. So I think that's how we encourage them to to add into the AMSA. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Charlene. So we can see that there are.、Um, Like we can say two different approaches yet similar concept on how AMSA were introduced to the freshmen.、Uh, like for example, like AMSA UI,、uh, they need to have like several、uh, orientation first. While in Taiwan, is、uh, introduced into the first session. So yeah, it's like different concept yet similar one.、Uh, I think we can also proceed to the next question.、Um, So in this one, how do you tackle the administrative administrative problem from university? So probably uh, uh, all participants here are come from different universities, and it may be it may be said that there are different uh, administrative uh, regulation that were done in the university. So how do you tackle this issue?、Um, probably we can start from Charlene. Okay, thank you.、Um, actually, I was I'm going to separate this part into three parts. First. I think it's important to fully realize how the administrative works in your school, and who to approach when you have to、um, approach them. Like you, you have to borrow the equipment, and you have to know the temper of the administration in charge of the stuff, and you also have to know the efficiency of the administ administrative for you to prepare advance if you want to hold an activity. And secondly,、um, I think the best way. Uh, is to be friends with the faculty. For example, I usually directly approach the faculty secretary when I have to do something. We have when I have to hold an activity or I have something complicated to ask, because、um, the secretary、uh, is in charge of all the stuff in the faculty. They have too much stuff to do, and they can remember everything, everything and what every club is doing. So just explain it to them and pe- be patient and be friends with them. Then. You have to establish an effective communicating way, either in person or like via email or line or are on the media, etc., to ensure you have someone to approach when there is a problem arise. And the last, but the most important one, is、uh, you have to be patient and you have to repeatedly, repeatedly remind the secretary or the administrative of school and. You have to ask until you understand all the details and how you're gonna work in the activity. Yes, and also you need luck. <laughs> yes, that's my answer. Okay, thank you so much, Charlene.、Uh, Alif, you may probably want to add something similar in your university. I think、uh, Char- Char- Charlene already explained quite well. Like I totally agree. There is part of luck, and also there is part of us that we should a good like maintain a good relationship with the administrative team because it is crucial because we need their help essentially to conduct our event. But I think it is also important to raise awareness all for all of our members to really understand the administrative the administrative role. So what I try to do is that. In Amsa Universitas Indonesia, we conduct two grand meetings. So the first grand meeting is the at the beginning of tenure, and meanwhile the second grand meeting is、uh, conducted in the last of tenure. So、uh, to make sure that our members know how to like doing the administrative way, in the first grand meeting there is a general explanation by general secretary. So the general secretary of Amsa Universitas Indonesia will explain in detail on how. We conduct administrative matters such as creating、uh, even proposal. So eventually, we able to get even permit from the university and how we、uh, report the event after we conducting the event. So I think that's the additional part on how we able to tackle down the administrative problem even before it happens like that. 
Okay, thank you so much, Ali. So that we can see from uh, both university that the system should be introduced to the, especially to the freshmen in order for them to ensure that the regeneration process can also uh, went smoothly. So yeah, I think it can be also applied in similarly in uh, across universities. Okay, so probably you can also proceed with the next question. So um, how do you cooperate with other organizations or universities for collaboration with your university? And is there any system that is applied to your AMSA member to promote collaboration? Um, for this one, probably Charlene can start first. Okay, thank you. Um, for LCs, um, I think Director of AMSEP serves as an info center for us to create collaboration with other organizations or universities. Um, that, uh, the following are how we work in Taiwan. Um, we release contracts and requirements of the exchange. So Taiwan has received this tenure and we will give a period for LCs or we will release it in the group and we will give a period of, for LCs to consider whether they want to exchange with that AMSA, chap, with AMSA member. And the director of AMSA will then choose the one who best matches the requirements as the final host. And then after, a match, after the matching, we will form, the director of MSEP will form groups with LC, one with LCs only and MSEP, and they will provide um, like many information like list of deadlines or guidelines to help LCs to hold uh, MSEP. And the other, one, the other group is with the exchange countries, and we are going to discuss about all the contracts and payments, number of delegates, whatever, and all the contents during the exchange. And... Um, there might be some universities that fail to get a contract every year. And so, like, because I said the director of MSEP is like the info center of LCs in Taiwan. So the director of MSEP will also um, to find, like, previous universities that work, that work well with Taiwan to, um, like, to get uh, the universities that fail to get a contract with them and then to make a contract. Yes. Okay, thank you, Charlene. Uh, probably uh, now uh, from Alif. Okay, uh, thanks, Charlene. So, I mean, I think I will add more on the other collaboration besides AMSEP. So, actually, AMSA, we actively seeking collaboration with government organization or non-governmental organization by offering a chance to collaborate through formal or informal way. So firstly, what I mean by active and formal approach of collaboration is by creating like invitation letter and partnership uh, proposal. So in the, in the very beginning of my tenure, uh, we had already pro uh, prepared these two things and the next one will be depend on what type of event that we would like to conduct. Like for instance, in the community outreach we will concentrate with cardiovascular health help. So from there, uh, we'll, we will try to hospital. It is one of the uh, university hospital of Universitas Indonesia to send a doctor and also give uh, education to the local communities. And also we seeking potential sponsors that would donate. Or maybe if you want, to bring about the sexual education team, we would like to invite the non-governmental organization that talks about related topics, and maybe even inviting the survivors as the speaker. So yeah, it uh, maybe it might diverse diverse be uh, based on what type of events that we like to conduct. I think that's on the additional things. Okay, thank you so much, Alif. Okay, so we're moving on to the NEB category. So what are the things a leader in AMSA University, in this context, uh, LC and the representative, should prioritize after being elected? And how do you balance these things as a medical student? Uh, we can start from Alif. Okay, uh, thank you, Maul. So I think there are three main things that representative should prioritize after being elected. The first thing, uh, it is to select the executive board. So it is, very important, why? Because you will work with them in one tenure, in one year. So it should 
uh, you should able to choose the the people that not only professionally that not only working uh, as a professional as they can but also have good interpersonal interpersonal skills because i think communication is one of the how in how we able to conduct organizations smoothly so we need to conduct the interview of the executive board and taking that and after we the selection of the executive we we then as the board will discuss then plan or the grand design for one year so we need to plan every event from every divisions in detail like in the first week of the October, there is a event A or even B in the third week of October, we need to plan it on the timeline in a table. And yeah, and then we conduct an annual grand meeting and present our tenure plan in all of our members. So I think that's uh, roughly what things as a leader in AMSA University should uh, prioritize after being elected. That's three main things. And regarding how uh, to balance uh, this thing as a medical students i think it's also become a quite challenge because we have many things to do but i think there are three main points that i would like to uh, share with everyone in here i think in the terms of time management it always uh, for me personally i think it's quite helpful to have a monthly or weekly planner so uh, i'm type of people that would list everything that i need to do in in a week or even in month so i i know in what day or what week that i would like very busy or i can attend more even or not so i think the that is uh, quite helpful in having a monthly or weekly planner so it's about the time management skill and second of all uh, being able to flexible i think as a medical student it's not only about learning the medical stuff itself but there are so many things as a doctor a quality of doctor that need to be nurtured so i think uh, the ability to be flexible you know how you know when it's it is the time the right time like for the exam time you need to be more prioritized that time to study of course but you know uh, when also to approach your member and maintain your arms initiative and lastly i think it's about delegating your uh, work so as a leader, you don't need to be the one that do everything. Remember that as a leader, you also need to develop your member and to be able to trust them and delegating some works. It, it is may sound challenging, but that's the part of becoming a leader, I think. I think that's all for me. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, Alif. So it's like a, a bit of personal approach. So how we can manage to uh, prioritize our schedule and also know how to delegate uh, the work to someone. Uh, probably, Charlene, you want to add uh, some points on it? Yes. Um, thank you, Alif, uh, giving us a really broad and uh, detailed um, explanation on how you're going to balance it, uh, all the stuff. And I totally agree with uh, that. You understand your duty. You have to have a clear vision for the next 10 year and to plan for all the details of the activities. And I think I want to share a bit of how we uh, really do this uh, in managing a team. Like we use many apps to assist us. Like for example, Time Tree. You have, uh, everyone knows Time Tree. Um, it's a app that that is has that has a calendar and and can be shared by all the people in a team. That if you if there is an event, it is coming, and then you can put the events on it, and there will be a reminder before the event and after that or whatever. So everyone can see the event and how uh, when it's going to be held. So everyone can um, prepare it beforehand. And like Notion or Google Docs or uh, others like iCloud Folders, I think sharing on the internet is a great way, great way for all the team members to, um, to know what are we going to do and to be transparent. And the other thing I think um, for the leader in the EMSA University have to prioritize if it is the enthusiasm because we are really busy. So um, the time management is really important and sometimes the enthusiasm will be like, um, I don't know, sometimes I have, very few enthusiasm. So uh, we 
have to know the initiation and why we want to why we want to run this activity or be the leader of the university because nothing can be run well without loving what we're doing and for example that i have a example um i participated in Mon model united nations when i was in a senior high school so after i entered university i made up my mind to extend my enthusi enthusiasm for international affairs then emsa is the job then i will make my best to make the, the university to be a better place yes okay um thank you so much charlene so it's uh adding on previous point you need to also be enthusiastic on uh the activities that were done in your organization because it's really important as well as a leader so we can proceed to the next question okay so this will be i think this uh, this is also pretty important in AMSA University. So how do you ensure fair and smooth regeneration process uh, in an AMSA University? And how do you ensure the sustainability uh, for uh, in this context, the sustainability of the program, the sustainability of the knowledge that we're obtaining in the university can be maintained by the uh, your successors? Um, I think Charlene can go first. Oh, thank you, Mal. Um, I think, and an election is really essential when we want to ensure the regeneration process to be fair and smooth. Um, in Chang'an University, actually, we do we we hold an election along with FMS Taiwan, the local of officers of FMS Taiwan, and we have a combined election of our successors. Like for example, we always schedule a night to have all the local officers of FMS Taiwan and local coordinators of AMSA Taiwan to be elected. And then we negotiate and coordinate with each other to find the best person for the position. We are like, the two organizations are like a cooperative and competitive um, relationship. And we want to, we through this election, we, we can find a best person for the position. And like, for example, we wrote the names of candidates on the blackboard and like to take two hours to finally come to a conclusion. And the other way, I think the handover job is really, really important um, because I had a bad experience in my senior high school. Just, at, just as I mentioned, um, I ran Model United Nations Club when I was in the senior high school and I got nearly zero hand, handover. Um, then, and I was being scolded by my club teacher, and we had a really bad time doing that. So I think handover is a really most important thing to do because um, we have to uh, let the successors of of us to know what we are going to do and all the details and the hidden problems or many bad habits this um, organization or activities has been done. So. And we have to also answer all the questions with whenever they encounter obstacles. Because so I think the handover is to ensure they understand everything because they are the soul of the team. That's my answer. Okay, thank you, Charlene. Uh, so moving on to Alif. Okay, thank you, Mao. So I think uh, it's pretty similar with uh, Charlene has explained, but I think I would like to take regeneration as a wider scope. So, so it also encompassing how we able to recruit a member itself and part of our AMSA so able to recruit a good member. So actually AMSA Universitas Indonesia, it is consists of over 180 members. So it's a lot. And how we able to make we firstly we have a division that have specialized in recruitment process. So this recruitment have the several work programs that have main function to attract new members, such as uh, creating a booth and also creating some event to invite new members to join. So I think that's uh, first thing in order to ensure there is a good regeneration. So, and the second of all would be how we elect, like what Charlie, Charlie. So, in Indonesia, we have 
uh, short of representative candidacy that lasts for one or one until two months. So in one in one until two months, there are series of events such as there is a fit and proper test. There is also public exploration. So it is when the candidate have the speech and also sharing their grand design in front of all of the members. So I think it is important to simulate and to expose the uh, the future representative to know how exactly and and how it is to become the leader of the army. I think it is uh, very important to expose them to experience. And last, I think I think it's already Charlie also mentioned about the handover things uh, of ability report. So it is how we able to maintain sustainability. So in each tenure, we have the full compilation of uh, there is a short of indicator of success of each event so we know that even a have 90 percent of in okay um thank you so much alif so if we can see that the approach that were taken uh, by both universities are different uh, the first one using collaborative approach uh, with other universities as well and another one using the specialist approach which uh, serve one division uh, which is specialty to uh, ensure the regeneration process can be done smoothly. I think we can use this example uh, as a good one. And we may proceed to the next question. So this question will be related to the events. Uh, how do you apply the visions of AMSA in your events? So for visions, I think some in some chapter, it was also mentioned as the philosophies, which is the knowledge, action, and friendship. Uh, and how do you bring a leadership model to your members in relation to this uh, visions of AMSA? Uh, probably Alif want to go first. Okay, uh, thank you, Maul. So I think how I apply the vision of AMSA in my events, it is actually back again to the each of the philosophical itself. So I think the first one from the knowledge part, we have the division. So actually in AMSA Universitas Indonesia, we had seven divisions. Like there is a uh, academic academic divisions. We have publication and promotion division. We have membership and development division. We have recruitment. We have community outreach division and delegation division. And lastly is uh, the the community outreach division. So I think that's uh, these seven division will have encompass this uh, vision into their uh, work programs. So starting from the knowledge, we as the AMSA University have academic workshops. So it is to conduct an academic training on how creating literature review, for instance, or how to create a meta-analysis on how to make a systematic review and also to prepare them in upcoming competition in national or even international such as is AMSI and AMSI. And meanwhile, for the action part, we uh, mainly do the action uh, value is on the community outreach division, division. So we conduct uh, community development and many others. And regarding friendship, it mostly related on how we conduct uh, the AMSA programs. And also we have several work events uh, by collaborating with other AMSA universities. So we have uh, exchange program and many others. So yeah, that's how uh, AMSA Universitas Indonesia apply the vision of AMSA in our events, I think. Okay, thank you, Alif. Uh, probably Charlie want to add up. Wow, thank you, Ali, for providing us a really, really, really brand and um, detailed. Uh, it's really, really surprising <laughs> because Taiwan, like um, the LCs and what we're doing in Taiwan is not that broad. So maybe I'll share some of the other visions like um, how we um, um, team up in our uh, own team because in Chang'an University we we form a team to like mainly go for the MSEP stuff so it's like um, for the knowledge part because we will divide our team into four group uh, six groups and one of one is the course designers and then we will want to craft uh, um, many we will discuss and brainstorm on how we are going to um, provide the knowledge knowledge part to the MSEP to into the MSEP. Like we will 
discuss about、uh, some workshop stuff like Chinese medicine or traditional craft and tea session or other、uh, or like healthcare systems debates on it. Yeah, that's the knowledge part we will do in our school. And like action part is like we will have a regular preparation meeting. We will get every team members involved in what we are going to do in this tenure. And for other,、um, for example, oh yeah, like that. And friendship parts like because we are a really really small team, like only um thirty people in our in our university, but we are very very good friends. Um, how to do that? We will have a regular like dinner parties, or when we we have parties or meetings, we will、um, we will buy foods or many games intertwined in、um, the meetings. So to get the atmosphere to be very、uh, delightful, and also we will help. We will hold、uh, an event called Emsa Week that that it's. Um, really, really popular in our school.、Um, it's not a really serious event, but we will、um, like make foods, make exotic foods. Like we have made Thai foods, Thai puddings, or、uh, gao pao from Thailand because we have a close relationship with our Thai friends. So that's a way to、um, to refrain and to sustain our friendship in our team. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the detailed explanation on how these events will be conducted in Amsa Universities. So we can proceed to the next question. So for the next question,、um, what type of events would you recommend in order to develop the skills of your members? Probably this will be some sort of training, another introduction of the program. And I don't know how you guys applied it in university. And how do you ensure a good participation in each event held?、Um, probably you can start from Charlene. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, also, um, Stanley, I'm going to like elaborate on what I have done in our、um, tiny team, but cute team. Yes, I we divide our team into six groups, like. Tour guides or course designers, photographers, whatever,、um, in the M sub team, and I'll give an example of tour guides, course designers, and photographers. Like for tour guides, because we are going to guide and tour all the foreigners to the attractions of Taiwan, so we will schedule the itinerary, and after deciding the itinerary. We will go on a simulation of city tours, like we LCs and the leader of the team, along with the team members, to check if they really know how to lead a bunch of、um, foreigners to tour to the tourist guides and how to smoothly connect like all public transportation and all the time management when they encountered in the itinerary, and also we will ask them to find.、Um, Resources like YouTube channels, for example, there is a YouTube channel called Spice in Taiwan that provides many traveling、um, information and how can you get there and what's、um, on the internet. So I'll Elsie's、um, will ask them to learn it from the internet and get themselves pack of this. And for the second example, it's like the course designers because、um, they have to introduce our Like traditional,、uh, traditional cultures and or our health,、um, health systems, for example, and we will ask them to learn more about these things by、um, like joining workshops or approach to the Chinese medicine teachers to learn for like、uh, the acupuncture or be familiar with all the systems in Taiwan. And like for the photographer part,、um, because there are many workshops currently to like teaching Adobe, for example, like Premiere or Lightroom, and I think it's really essential for the photographers of the team to know this knowledge. So we will、um, encourage them to join the classes that is held by the photography clubs. They can learn like portrait photography, or they can、um, go to the press a world press exhibition that. It's about the photography to know how they can get beautiful pictures, and for like my part,、um, 
because we will know which country we are going to exchange. So I think it's very, really, really important for our team to know the background of the country. So I will uh, keep an eye on sharing the news of the twinning country. For example, like um, if I we had a we had a cooperation with Thailand, and everyone knows that Thai, uh, Thailand is undergoing a a protest. So in, in this case, we will I will share the news to my team and let them know what our twinning country uh, is undergoing and then maybe they can chat it um, when they meet to meet each other yes okay thank you so much charlene i think alif probably have similar or different approach towards this question uh yeah so the question would be what type of events that i would recommend to my member site so regarding of that, because AMSA Universitas Indonesia have over 85 core programs. So we have seven division and each of division have almost 10 until 11 more programs. So there are many platform to our member to develop. So it is back again to their interest on what their main interest in joining AMSA. If you want to search up upon the competition or research, okay, I will suggest you to uh, attend the academic workshop that we had. Or if you want to know more about how to connecting with community or developing the community, okay, you can join the community outreach program on community developing, uh, community development in one of the uh, locations. Or if you want to have the international exposure, like connecting with the international, uh, international people and also meeting other medical students, I would suggest you to join AMSAP. So I think that's uh, the three main things that I would uh, recommend to develop the skill of my member, which mainly really depends on what type of skills or interests that they have. And I think uh, how I able to ensure good participation each, in each event, I think uh, it's, uh, we have something that called as AMSA points. So AMSA points is accumulation on how many this member attend AMSA, AMSA is events. So by accumulating many points, it also means that you attend many AMSA events and there is an award, like the best member award for the one that have the highest point like that. So I think it's keep on motivating them to become uh, the best because in the end, we will give a certificate of appreciation and short of give to the best member like that. Okay, thank you, Alif. So yeah, I think we can also see a similar yet different approaches from both universities. But the point is, uh, these programs are meant to develop the skills, uh, which can be specified on the interests of each members. So uh, yeah, I think it can also be applied in uh, all AMSA universities across AMSA International. Uh, we can. Proceed to the next question. How do you distribute the team and resources for these events? And what are the usual components of a basic team? So when you are conducting a program, I think there will be some sort of team, right? And how do you ensure that the team will be equally distributed and what components that you're gonna uh, put into the team? So I think Alif can go first. Uh, thank you, Paul. So how I will load the team and resource for one event? I think, uh, first of all, there is a uh, terms that we call as a core team. So it is the main team that have main job in overseeing this event. So it consists of the uh, project officer. And second of all, we have the secretary. And second of all, uh, third of all, we have treasurer and fourth head of event. So these four person, these four role need to be exist in every kind of event. And it depends on event again, if there is a larger event, such as we have a national medical and general biology competition for high school, uh, for, uh, high school student across Indonesia. So in, we inviting 100 of medical students. So it will be big event. Of course, we need more extension of the, the core team itself. So we will have like a uh, head of the publication and documentation. We have the consumption team and many other uh, part of the team. So I think that's the four main basic thing. And the, I mean, the usual component of a basic team and there is a additional team depends on the event that we want to help. I think that's for me. OK, 
Okay, thank you, Alif. Uh, Charlin, do you want to add uh, things in uh, probably those that are applied in Amsa Taiwan? Um, actually, we have the same like structure as Alip said, and I think um, I want to add something. It's like um, we usually, although we are smaller and our activities are not that not that broad, but um, before every um, activity, we have a preparation committee, and we will uh, do it for like three times. Like the first time is. Um, we will gather the team and because all of them are not familiar with other each other so we will have like a ice break and then have a uh, lc's or the um the, in, the person in charge will have an overview of the activities and then we will distribute all the resources and or information to all the team to let them know what we are going to do and what we want them to do um in this activity and maybe after like one month we will do a second preparation committee to make a prototype of the activity so like to 70%. They have to prepare to the 70% of the activity and we will revise and um, perform by every team and revise it again and again. And the, the last one, and it's the third one is before, right before the activity, we will have the third regular meet. Uh, preparation committee uh, we will do it do something like checking or running through all the details for the activities to ensure it can run smoothly thank you okay thank you Charlene so yeah I think yeah both uh, universities have pretty similar approach um, I think we can proceed to the next question so for this question, uh, we would like to ask whether uh, both universities have regular partners to collaborate with for each event. In this context, the regular partners probably related to the sponsor or the media partners, especially when uh, you're making an event. Um, I think we can start from Charlene. Okay, thank you. Um, just as I've mentioned, because um, the team in Chang'an University mainly focus on the MSEP um, activity. So I'll just elaborate more on this. Um, we have we have the team separated into six groups. The first one is like the touring groups and the other one is activity designers group. And the third one is course designers. The fourth one is live planner and general affairs. And the fifth one is the photographers. And the sixth one is the art and craft designers. Just as everyone can see, we uh, we divide it into a very detailed portion. And so these are the uh, partners we regularly collaborate with. And we will select these partners um, um, in the, at the end of each tenure. And so they can, uh, the seniors can hand over all the stuff to the successors and then we can collaborate with each other in the next tenure. Yes. Okay, thank you, Charlene. Probably Alif want to add up. Okay, uh, thank you, Mal. So I think, yeah, we can quite learn much from Charlene on how she already detailed the distribution itself for Amazon Studies Indonesia. Actually, we have several sponsors. So this kind of, uh, these sponsor are like re regularly attend our, our event and also give donation. Like it can, be many forms like fresh money or even in terms of giving a resource so yeah it's kind of sponsors that and also for the media partner we have several media partner but uh, we don't like classify it so we tend to like generalize it as the media partner so for the media partner it can be like from the AMSA Indonesia itself, so we can promote our event to be uh, to be open to all of the AMSA universities, uh, not the AMSA universities, and also several uh, independent media partners, such as from the uh, radios, the magazines, and others. So yeah, I think that's for the uh, sponsor uh, and also media partner, but for the uh, organization itself, we have several organization that we continue to maintain the collaboration such as the Asian Law Student, Student Association, ALSA, ISAC, the uh, Thalassemic Community and others. 
Okay, thank you, Alif. So we can see that the partners that we collaborated with, it's not only related to the GO or NGO, but also in the detailed, uh, detailed portion of the event. Uh, for example, is the promotion and also the fundings. Uh, I think we can also proceed with the next question. So how do you allocate the members into their divisions and departments and what system is used? I think from our previous questions, Charlene and Alif also have mentioned a little bit about how the systems were developed. Uh, but can both of you like explain briefly about how what system are that is used? Just a brief one. I think we can start from Alif. Okay, so I think for the brief one, so I already mentioned previously that um, so is contain of 170 members, like 170 and 180, so that's a lot. And we have seven divisions. So first of all, in the general meeting of executive board, so we have total of 20 executive board consisting of representative general secretary and also the head of each of divisions. So we will starting by uh, creating a spreadsheet. So the spreadsheet divided into divisions and each of division will be allocated among of member depends on how much uh, the working programs that they need to done that they need to accomplish and how big the event. So for instance, in academic division, they have 10 work programs that need to, need to be done. Meanwhile, for the publication and promotion, they only have uh, like five or six work programs. So there will be different one of my, uh, numbers. So that's why in my uh, previous explanation, it's very important to first set up the one year ag agenda and to set up how many work programs that you need to conduct and then uh, wisely distribute one of the members that need that need to be placed in the division. So I think uh, on what system, I think it is based on how many events and how big the urgency of the event itself. I think that's all for me. Okay, thank you, Alif. So Charlene, do you have, probably have different system that are used? Uh, yes, we have a more, uh, we have a smaller but delicate um, um, system. Um, actually, it's really, really easy because um, we mainly focus on AMSEP. So like for Chang'an University, we get contract to have exchange with the twinning universities often uh, in the first half of the year, um, often in like April to June. So we often have recruitment um, in November or December. And there are two parts. First, we will release the information that we will have an interview and ask uh, the the candidates to fill up the registration form and their preferred orders to uh, to they want to interview for this thing. And the next one will be the interview. We will set up a 10 minutes interview with all the cadres of the team inside like a room and then to interview them together and find a competent person for for the six divisions of the team. Yes, that's really, really easy. Okay, thank you, Charlene. So as we can see, it also depends on how the preferences of each member uh, may contribute in AMSA. Okay, so probably we can proceed to the next question. So what system do you use to help members adapt themselves to workload and responsibility in AMSA? I think it, can, it also mentioned previously in the freshman part that uh, AMSA were introduced and the systems and order workloads were also introduced to the, uh, the freshman. Uh, however, do you want to add anything else from this question, probably from Charlene? Well, I think um, the key point is to announce everything in advance and have a, a complete and detailed agenda after you recruit, recruit all the team because um, you don't want everyone to be bombarded by uh, both the schoolwork and the, uh, the activities that you are going to hold. So I think like you have to tell them what you are going to do and when you are going to do, what month, what week, and to uh, to to announce in events. And also you have to keep an eye on the progress of every team because you have to ensure they don't. Um, they are they're doing well and also you have to provide assistance when necessary and that's why that's what i um i currently doing when i was in lc yes okay thank you charlene uh alif do you want to add anything else okay thank you mal so uh because AMSA, we have many work programs on each division so 
what I need, what I implement is the weekly report system. So each of head of division will like give me like what kind of progress that they make, what kind of uh, how is the preparation of even A, even B, even C, and how can I help as the leader or the representative itself. So I think that's uh, what I want to say is that it is important to have an update of progress so we can track your progress and also meet meeting up the deadline. So first thing first, you need to uh, know how to establish a good uh, good progress uh, update and also to set the deadline. It is how to uh, maintain the workload. And second of all is, I think it's a little bit similar with Charlene, it's upon the personal approach. So when the members cannot do it or they don't know how exactly to conduct an event, or how to do something, the head of division is the one that will help them in the first place. But if uh, the head of division also have the struggle in conducting the event or in doing a particular task, uh, I as the representative will help them. So that's how uh, the system that works in Amsterdam Universitas Indonesia. So the member will talk about it up to the head of division and head of division will talk it to the vice representative and the vice representative will talk it to me. It's the, it is how the system to distribute the responsibility in AMSA Universitas Indonesia. Okay, thank you so much for your explanation, Alif. Uh, I think we can proceed to the next question. Uh, how do you promote members to be active at university level and national level since uh, it's not only to be limited in the university level, but uh, members of AMSA should also contribute more in the national level. So how do you encourage your members to be more active? I think we can start from Alif. Okay, thank you, uh, Maul. So for the question about how to promote members to be active at university level and national level, uh, I think because uh, AMSA Universitas Indonesia itself have quite old age right now. So, uh, in the October, Amsterdam Universitas Indonesia is on 34 years. So it has been established from 86. So we have a good track record on our members to play in the both university, national, and even international level. So the first thing that I, uh, I will do to promote to the member is uh, to encourage them like to join, to even to submit their application for whatever the position they want in the national and international and uh, give them an assurance that uh, we as the representative or we as the seniors will help them because it is important to keep on pushing and motivating them and tell them that there is nothing to worry about because we have so much seniors that we can contact on. So I think uh, that's part of how we uh, me as the representative approach my member to be active at university level and national level. And second of all, we have a up general update. So in AMSA Universitas Indonesia, we have uh, something that called as AMSA opportunities. So AMSA opportunities is compilation of what kind of event that you can attend in each uh, bi-weekly. So it, in every, uh, every two weeks, there is a general update. So there is an F AMSEP exchange program, there is an academic workshop, or there is a national event, there is an international competition. So we will keep on updating. So it is updated through a uh, line group and also from our Instagram. So I think, and third of all is by uh, our members to register on the mailing list. So this mailing list will serve as the reminder of the events and updates. So the members could know the latest updates or events that they can join. I think that's three things that I conduct to promote to our members to become active. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alif. Uh, Charlene, do you want to add anything else? Uh, thank you. I think it's really, really similar to Alif uh, in Changi University. We also like, uh, although AMSA is really, really new, like, yes, we have just become independent in Taiwan. So it's quite new and Changi University is kind of rural. So um, students from Changi University are not that involved in participating in the national or 
in a uh, university level of um, all the activities that AMSA hold. But um, I'll, what I've done is to like, because there are many PCP workshops or um, many M6 I have mentioned or many academic workshops um, held by uh, AMSA Taiwan. So I always encourage them and um, to release the news from Facebook or Instagram's fan page to encourage them to um, join those activities. And for our internal site, because we hold MCEP really like two times in a year. So it's re really, I think, um, be familiar with the potential guy. You can easily find the potential guy in your team that oh, they, they might have the potential to run for a better position in a national level. So my my way is to approach them, chat with them, and to figure out their willingness and thoughts about the activity, and also see if they have accept other tasks or positions aside from AMSA, and then try to guide and persuade them to run for the national and international position. And most of all, I think we can, um, we as LCs can provide assistance like recommend recommendation because you know some. Um, national officers, so you can provide recommendation of the potential guide to the national level. So maybe they will be more confident in running for the position. Yes, that's all. Okay, thank you, Charlene. I think we can also proceed to the last question. I hope this will be the last. <laughs> okay, so this is one of the important ones. So how do you train and encourage members to run for the regeneration process of AMSA International? Since yeah, it's not only the university one, it's not only the national one, but AMSA International also need the regeneration process. And it, also, it comes from the AMSA University members as well. So um, I think uh, we can start from Alif. Okay, thank you, Mao. So for this part, I think since the beginning of the joining AMSA OE, we have orientation part that I have been explained before. So in the part of orientation process, the first event that they need to attend is called as AMSA session. So in the AMSA session, there is a, there is a deliberate explanation about what is AMSA International, what is AMSA Indonesia, and what is AMSA University. So in the early day, in the early day of the joining AMSA, they already get exposure of the AMSA International. So I think that's a good thing because Oh, they, they will know about the conferences that they can to attend and they can also set up from even in the beginning to become part of AMSA International. I think that's how I train and encourage my members to uh, become the part of AMSA International. And second of all, I think we continue to consistently encourage our members to apply for the position of executive committee of AMSA International for the J AMSA. So currently, uh, in the AMSA International, we have seven or our members to become part of the EC uh, executive committee, and also we have several of our members to be participated in both J AMSA and also uh, AMSA e newsletter. So I think uh, by consistently uh, giving contribution, it also gives uh, our new members and motivation and also a place to ask whether they have a confusion or like there is a doubt to join of AMSA International. I think uh, that's two main things. And also the third and the last part is by, by the end of the tenure. So when it comes to uh, AMSA International opening the position of executive committee applications, AMSA UE will conduct an AMSA international session. So we will invite some of our seniors that become the executive committee and also sharing their experience and even like further encourage them to apply. I think that's uh, three things that AMSA Mr. Indonesia do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Alif. Uh, for Charlene, do you want to add anything else? Actually, no, because I, I really didn't have uh, much experience about this, but I totally agree with Alif about uh, his approach to encourage members to join, yes, AMSA International. And we will try our best in the future. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Charlene. 
Okay, so that will be the end of the panel discussion. Uh, we would like to say thank you so much uh, for Charlene and Alif uh, for sharing their detailed explanation and experience on how they run the Hamza University. We will open the uh, floor to the audience. Do we have any additional questions from our participants? And if you may, if you have, uh, you may uh, type them using the chat feature on Zoom or raise your hand if you want to verbalize your question. Okay, uh, I will give this chance to Prima Randana. You may unmute yourself. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity the, from the moderator. Uh, I would like to ask to both of the speaker about regarding how to uh, encourage and uh, persuade if you if uh, the new local university, uh, local university, uh, AMSA local university, established a very new. The the first time they established AMSA in their university, how can they persuade their uh, new member? How can they invite new member? I mean, yes, for the, uh, not uh, not for the old AMSA local university for very very new and beginning AMSA university. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the question, Prima. So who would like to answer the question first? Charlene, Alif? Okay, I think we can start from Alif. Okay, so thank you for the question. So regarding on how we approach, like we know that this university is still new and still uh, have a difficult time to gather a new members. So I think it is part of the AMSA chapter responsibility in helping the AMSA University to establish their uh, to establish their uh, as a whole new organization. So I think the there is need to be maintain a good relationship between the AMSA chapter or the AMSA, for instance, the AMSA Indonesia with the current new members. So they will know how to exactly to develop a new event or also to gather new members so i think that's first thing uh, to do they need to establish uh, the good communication with the amsa chapter and second of all on uh, how specifically we able to get a new member i think what makes amsa stood out from the other organization is upon the possibility and the scope of their field so as we know that amsa have the knowledge action and friendship so i think by emphasizing that the new medical students that want to join that AMSA University, they will able to have three, all of them, like they will able to uh, to join competition, to join exchange program, to join many community outreach events. I think that's become an, some a competitive advantage compared to the other organization that exists in that university. So I think that's the main part. And the third of all, I think a good publication promotion, I think it's crucial. So after uh, having a good like um, reasons or how we want to deliver AMSA University to the university, to the, I mean, the medical students in there. The third of all is how they able to maintain a good publication promotion. It can, I think it can through from many platforms such as from the Instagram. So, or maybe it can be from the Facebook group or even from the chat, like from the WhatsApp or line. I think it's, could become more effective. I think the three main uh, things that need, they need to do as the new university is that to have a good, to maintain a connection with the AMSA nationals, to discover a new and innovative way to gain new members, and second of all, to promote AMSA to become uh, in the comprehensive manner. And the third of all is by maintaining a good publication and promotions through various media. Thank you. Maybe we, Charlene, want to add. Um, for me, I want to add something. It's because Taiwan, uh, AMSA in Taiwan is rather small and um, rather new also. So maybe targeting um, the audience or the members is a really important way. Um, you, can, you can target if you want you can target uh, the students, uh, medical students, if, like like separate it into uh, 
how to say that. You can target it in a academic way or entertaining way, like you want your AMSA uh, activities to be more academically, or you want to be more entertainingly, or you can intertwine both of them. So you can find the characteristics of your members or the members you want to approach, and then to make um, a to to try to find out a way. Um, they really, they, they will be interested in. Yeah, so I think the targets is really, really important. Yes. Okay, thank you so much, Alif and Charlene, for answering the question. Is it pretty clear, Prima? Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Uh, from the floor, are there any other questions that you would like to ask to our panelists? If so, you may type the questions. Okay. Uh, so we have one question from Sienna. The question is, will it be effective to have a senior AMSA university to get the new ones that are starting out? If yes, how do you think they can show examples to these young member universities? Um, for this one, I think we can start from Charlie. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Wait. Um, I think the answer is yes, because uh, the senior universities has more experience to to guide the new universities. And there are many, um, they can provide their structures and their experience to the young universities. Um, I think, I think they can like have a, they can, um, provide like how they recruit their members, the, the, the system they recruit their members. And also they can have a meeting like discussing about um, the unique characteristics of two universities. They can find the difference and between the universities and find a way to adapt to the young university for them to come up, a, come up with a way to, uh, to create their unique, unique team and um, kind of activities. And they also, uh, the senior universities can also guide the young university to, um, to discover the, uh, the current resources that the young universities have. So because it's really hard to build a big team in the first. So I think finding the resources uh, the, school, the young university currently have, it's a really important thing for them to do what they can do. And also they can try to expand it after they have established uh, all this stuff, uh, depending on the, the resources they have. Yes. Okay, probably Alif want to add it. Okay, thank you, Charlene, for the explanation. I think I want to add that in AMSA Indonesia, we have almost 36 AMSA universities. So in each year, we introduce one until two new members of university. So currently in Indonesia, there are over 70 until 80 medical faculty, medical faculty. So currently there is 36 AMSA universities that have joined and we progressively adding up like one or two. And each year there is a senior member that being elected to guide them so what kind of guidance that they will provide? So I think to systematically approach this, I think I will explain it in two main ways, the internal one and the external one. So internally, this senior, this senior AMSA university could guide them in how to establish a good executive board. Like what is the minimum uh, role that need to be exist in, a, in the executive board of the AMSA university? and how they will, I think Charlene, Charlene already mentioned it, how they will able to recruit a member. And then we can also discuss about how they will conduct, uh, how to conduct several events, how they could run through the uh, administrative teams to uh, apply to being registered in their university and so on and so on. I think it's crucial. So to have one of the senior members to really guide from A to Z. And regarding the external one, I think it is also role of senior members on uh, introducing the new uh, AMSA universities, such as the, I think externally in district way. So they could know uh, this senior member would introduce 
the new AMSA university, university into the district because uh, AMSA Indonesia divided into several districts. And also in the national and international one, I think uh, it is important so these new members could start out to maintain their contrib contribution in the national and international one. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Charlene and Alif, for the uh, answering the question. Um, I hope that answers all the uh, questions. And that will be the end of the first part of our session. We hope that it was informative and will prove useful when managing membership at the university level. We'll take a break for around three minutes. And after that, we will proceed to the second part of this uh, session. The Asian Medical Students Association International is a peak representative organization for medical students. From numerous local chapters around the globe, training doctors from numerous local chapters combine to share knowledge, undertake activities and social services, and create international and transcontinental friendships. AMSA was officially founded in Manila, Philippines in 1985 and to this day has been an active, dynamic, and exciting student life. Nonprofit and non-political organization. Today, with members and friends spanning across the globe, AMSA has an active student exchange program, owns a biomedical journal which provides AMSA members an avenue to get their works published, regularly undertakes national and regional projects, provides humanitarian assistance at times of need, produces quarterly student publications, provides opportunity for AMSA members who have graduated to maintain social contact, and liaises with numerous organizations and companies to facilitate and promote health, growth, and development for the benefit of society and our members. AMSA's biannual conferences, EMSC, and AMSC have been a key focus for the organization. Every year, these events see over 700 students from across the world combine to learn from each other, teach their fellow peers, and develop lasting friendships. For more information, you can find us on email, YouTube channel, Weibo, Instagram, Facebook, Google+, Twitter, or you can visit our website. And for the instruction for the SGD, the participants will be divided into small groups and each, unif each group will be given one scenario and which depicts dilemmas in managing membership at the university level. The group will be given 15 minutes total to come up with the answers for the scenarios. There will be no facilitators per group. However, our panelists will be in the main room and you can uh, use the ask for help feature if you need assistance to answer the question. Groups do not need to come up with a slide presentation or any visual aid. And if your group prefers to do so, we encourage using Google Slides so everyone can contribute uh, equally. And after the 15 minutes, the participants will regather gather in a plenary session where all groups will share their answers to the scenarios to the rest of the participants. Each group must select a representative to present their answers on their behalf. And the last instruction will be the panelists may comment on a group's answers and give their recommendations during the plenary session. Okay, so Madri will help to assign everyone to the breakout rooms. And here are the links to the case scenarios for each group. Uh, can we proceed to the next slide? 
Okay, so please work only on the case that is similar with your group number. If you got the breakout room one, uh, you only need to do the uh, SGD scenario one. Uh, please take note of them. The link will be redistributed later after everyone has entered the breakout rooms, but you can also take a screenshot of this slide if you want to. Please make sure everyone is given a chance to contribute to the discussion. As we, show, uh, as we are short in manpower, we don't have the facilitators, but yeah, our panelists will be able to help us. Uh, does anyone have any questions or clarifications regarding the instruction? Okay, if there are none, uh, if you need assistance, uh, you can click on the more button and zoom to uh, select us for help. Uh, the time now is 16.30, uh, GMT plus eight. We will send everyone to the breakout rooms and come back after 15 minutes. Good luck. Okay, uh, hi everyone. I hope you had a productive discussion with your mates. So please make sure you have chosen your representative for the next part of the session. For the group presentations, I'll be flashing the given SGD scenarios on the screen with help from Madri. And when your group number is called, the group representative should use the raise hand function and I'll call on them to share the group's answers. Again, when your group number is called, the representative must use the raise hand function and they will be called to present. Okay, so we, let's take a look at SGD scenario number one. Um, to share their answers to question number one, let's call on the representative of uh, breakout room one. Does anyone from our uh, would like to present their group on sharing the question? Yeah, sorry. I, I think I, I don't have a raise hand function in my in my console. It's just oh. a clap and a thumbs up. But uh, so I would be, I'm Charles, I'll be presenting on behalf of the group one. So our answer to this is uh, it comes in three folds, uh, three parts. The first one is to say that AMSA is unique. So each organization has a you know, different uh, objective, different philosophy, and AMSA definitely has its own objective and philosophy. So these are different focus points for each organization. And we think therefore that is, there's no reason to take them, to take the other organization as a threat, but instead we can actually work towards in collaboration. That would be better. Number two is about AMSA's philosophy, which is knowledge, action, and I would emphasize the last part, friendship. So if you start a fight, it won't look good in AMSA because we're not living what, what we talk, you know, what, what we say. And burning bridges at this point in time will not help in the long run as well because you will lose the perspective of working together. So all the possibilities of having a collaboration with this other organization it vanishes if you start a fight. And of course, it won't look good on us. It won't look good on them. It won't look good on anyone. The faculties will, uh, you know, will start to question like, um, are they teaching us the right thing? Which is, of course, not a good, not a good thing to happen. And lastly, uh, point number three, we want to address the root of this insecurity. So this like a feeling that, you know, we're being threatened, especially in insecurity. And, uh, and we, to address this, we want to develop AMSA in our local university. So we want to you know, increase our publicity to our members. We find the things that we can actually offer to our members the best. We step out our game and then we don't have to like, you know, feel threatened by the presence of another organization. We do our own work. We, we, we avoid like, or we, not, we don't interfere with their work and we can work towards a collaboration. So that is the three points that we want to point out for our group. AMSA is unique, friendship, and we want to address the root of the insecurity. We want to develop AMSA in locally in our university. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much, Charles, for, your, uh, for sharing your, uh, your group's answers towards this issue. Does uh, anyone from our panel want to comment on the group's answers? Probably Charlene or Alif. Okay, I go first. Thank you for group one for presenting uh, such a complete insight of uh, the scenario. And I think, in, in my opinion, yes, I, I totally agree with group one that competition, like uh, we, we have to be friends and know our position and like cooperate uh, to have collaboration with uh, the, the so-called threatening organization. And in my opinion, I think um, competition is always the best element to improve ourselves. So through um, the upcoming of this organization, I think it's a bet it's a best time for us, for our organization to reflect and to rethink about our positions and our difference and why we are irreplaceable. For example, in um, like Chang'an University, um, uh, AMSA, AMSA CGU provides many opportunities for uh, students to go abroad or to uh, have interactions with foreigners, and that's why many many other organizations cannot do. And 
Uh, the other one is like uh, AMSA CGU target freshmen and sophomore like uh, students in the more uh, in a uh, lesser year. So we we know our targets are freshmen and sophomore. Then we know how we can approach them, and that's our uh, most influential like weapons. Yes, and I think also friendship parts. We have to have cooperation with the organization uh, with the threatening organization. Um, for example, in in Chang'e University, just I, as I've mentioned before, we have uh, we have the regeneration election together, and that's the way we um, like cooperate with them because uh, some of our members are even coming from other organizations. So it's um, it's easy. No, it's like. We have we can work together and we can join many uh, many kinds of activities. So that's the cooperation part. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you, Charlene. Alif, do you want to add anything else? Okay, uh, thank you, Charlene and Charles, for the explanation. So I totally agree with Charles on how we should seek of collaboration instead of seeing them as the enemy. But I think. I will take a different approach on here because in Universitas Indonesia itself, there are almost like 10 until 11 organizations. So the situation in there that is that like we are competing for gaining uh, most member of it. So I think it's quite a bit challenging when it comes to right to that situation. So what I would suggest on is that on facing that kind of situation, I think is the first is reevaluating again, like don't be like complacent with your current AMSA university status like seek out for the new innovation that could you that you could implement by seeing the characteristic of the medical student in there such as what is really they uh, searching for is that for the international exposure or maybe is that for the uh, academic things or like that so we could provide and as long as it's still uh, in line with the philosophy philosophical uh, of AMSA international and AMSA the chapter. I think uh, that's one thing about how we need to reevaluate. And second of all is upon, uh, I think, how we able to maintain a good again and again. I think uh, when members come and pick on which organization that they will join, I think they will see the quality and what reflects the quality. I think for the Amsterdam Universitas Indonesia itself, the there is in our chapter in AMSA Indonesia, there is an award that given yearly that there is a best overall university, the most scientific AMSA university. And by maintaining the achievement, it also reflects the quality. I think that's something that can be uh, become a standard in each year to keep on improving. I think uh, that's to point upon re-evaluating and maintaining a good standard. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Charlene and Alif, uh, for sharing uh, their opinion about this scenario. And also, thank you, Charles, for sharing uh, on behalf of your group. Uh, now, we will proceed to the second scenario. So, COVID-19 hit the world, and your faculty has ordered you to cancel an upcoming AMSEP that is scheduled to be held in less than a week. Not only this AMSEP, but all other activities scheduled within the upcoming six months have also been ordered to be canceled. Unfortunately, your two universities delegates have bought their tickets. How will you respond? Uh, did anyone from group two would like to present their finding? Okay, Dr. Avi, you can unmute yourself. Hi, uh, how are you? Uh, how's everyone? You guys are doing amazing well. Uh, so I'll be uh, representing and putting forward the views with uh, Sheena from Malaysia, Elaine, and Fiza. All right. Um, so I think this is one situation that a lot of countries, a lot of chapters came across in different ways, as Sheena conveyed that this was a situation that they had in Malaysia, they had already booked uh, and planned the AMSEP, and it had to be cancelled at the end minute, and a lot of uh, candidates from the Twin University had actually booked the tickets, the flight tickets, which is a considerable cost. So uh, we've gathered together five points, I think, which can work in favor. So uh, the first uh, potential uh, possibility is, depending upon what the guidelines in the country are, if 
the AMSEP or if the gathering is cancelled, terminated because of a huge number of people, then obviously there is no way that it can go ahead. But if there's a possibility that uh, a smaller gathering can be done in context of the country's uh, rules and everything, then I think if a minimum number of people have only ordered the tickets, so the chapter can go ahead with uh, possibilizing a smaller gathering of people at AMSA that year. But even that might not be feasible because obviously COVID-19 is a huge, huge thing. So that might not be a real possibility. Uh, the second thing that could be done is obviously releasing a, an official letter as soon as possible to mitigate the damage so that other people don't start booking their uh, tickets at least until the situation is clear. Uh, although it is a very understandable situation, it is no one's fault, but yet because uh, it was planned and officialized and it is a big setback for people who got selected at AMSA, uh, an official letter of apology in a way, I think owning up to the situation is really important. Thirdly, uh, as something that I get inspired a lot from my own chapter, uh, director of AMSA that we have in India over here. I think this year, although COVID did not allow a lot of things to happen live, we had about two live virtual AMSEP sessions, one with Philippines and one was a tri AMSEP, and also another mini AMSEP kind of a session. So although it cannot replace the live situation, but to help cope up or at least not give a really big setback to people who get got selected at AMSEP, because that is a huge thing, getting selected from across the country. And in a way, it is. It is. It feels bad that you could not go to a place. So I think the virtual AMSEP can definitely at least give you the experience of meeting with people virtually internationally. That can help mitigate the damage. Lastly, even if that is not possible in a way, what could be done is uh, prioritize the people who got selected for the next AMSEP whenever that happens, and that can be released as an official letter. Uh, and one very important thing is because as Sheena from um, uh, RC um, from Malaysia also conveyed that when they totaled up the budget that the people had spent on the tickets, it was a huge amount. And it is, the flight tickets are definitely not cheap, right? So, uh, and it cannot be one person's responsibility for the reimbursement. But uh, they also got to their own chapter's uh, university and released this message. So if they could mitigate the damage, the reimbursement could be divided for the people who had bought the tickets. And I think they got a very reasonable, decent amount of help people. And because it's not much of a price for a sing for multiple people, but when it comes down to a single person, it gets a huge amount, right? And at the same time, the coordination between both the chapters, because it has to be a very understandable situation that it is neither of the chapters fault. Uh, if they're willing to, uh, if this understanding is there, I think, uh, the chapter who was coming will also not demand much because things can be uh, worked up in the future meetings if there's a, a compassionate equation between the two chapters. So I think those are the five points we discussed. Thank you from all our behalf. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Abhi, for the very detailed answer for this scenario. Uh, is there uh, any of the panelists who would like to respond to the answer of this question? Okay, I think we can start from Alif. Okay, thank you. I think it has been a quite like detailed explanation. I completely agree on how we should react from, we should like publish the official letter and moving on to the apology letter. And even we need to create a several scenarios starting from creating a smaller arm set, virtual arm set, or even if it's not possible, we should able to prioritize the AMSEP, the members that have been chosen to pick AMSEP. But I, I think it's already uh, clear about that. And I think Charlene will add about AMSEP. But I think from this question, uh, it's also talking about another event or work programs that possibly help in the six months. So I think I want to give uh, more addition to that. So I think uh, when you when we talk about the plan, the plan of action that we have done and or we would conduct in remaining six months. There must be like several events that we want to conduct. But I think when it's not possible, uh, I will take this approach as the AMSA University, as the leader of AMSA University. So me as the leader, I would like to collect all of my executive board and 
uh, conduct a meeting upon to classify which event that have the that have the main urgency that have uh, most urgent to conduct it. And second of all, is it possible to be conducted online? So I think, and when we facing pandemic, there is many uncertainty. So we cannot just like, okay, we just delay this event and waiting for the pandemic is over. I think it's not, uh, it's not uh, like a quiet plan, like a good plan. So I think I will uh, suggest for the AMSA University uh, leaders to rethink their upcoming plan for the six month classify which event that uh, urgently need to do and seeing that if it is possible to conduct it online. So I think I would suggest that. And uh, finally, we and we will talk about the detailed mechanism on how we will conduct online. I think that's all for me. I think Charlene want to add. Okay. Um, as Ali has just mentioned, I will gather my team to um, like think of the upcoming six months or um, for maybe it's just one year plan because of the pandemic will consist. I, I don't know how long it will uh, it will go. And so I think we have to uh, the leaders have to gather all the team members to think about the future plans and also the leaders, the, the many, the important thing the leader has to do is to um, clear, clarify and comfort the team members' disappointment because after all these preparation, they have, uh, what they have done have been in vain. So it's important to, um, to comfort them. And also you have to come up new ideas about, um, uh, new, come up new ideas or activities that is, that it's doable in this kind of situation. And also if you come up with a new idea and then you have to propose a safe way to, to ensure and to make the university or the administrative to, uh, to know that your activity is, is going to be safe, not infections. Like you have, you can propose a like pandemic uh, prevention version for, for example, you have to wear masks all the time or you can um, change uh, the event into an open air site or you have to keep safe distance, et cetera. This, the leaders have to think detailedly about how the future activities have, can be done and so to ensure all the activities is safe. Yes, that's for me. Okay, thank you so much for the feedback from Alif and Charlene, and thank you so much for Dr. Avi for uh, representing Group 2 uh, for answering this scenario. Uh, we will move to the scenario number three, uh, which is that you are the leader of your university's AMSA community and you will have freshmen soon. The faculty plans on event where all organizations will be introduced to the freshmen. It will be similar to a homecoming day in several universities. The faculty only provides a table for the booth and you should provide other things to promote AMSA to the freshmen. Discuss on ways to promote AMSA by optimizing whatever you have. Justify strategy. Um, does anyone from group G would like to present the group? Okay. Uh, you may unmute yourself, Iman. Right. Am I audible? Yes, clear. All right. Okay, so as discussed by um, our group, uh, first of all, it says that we only are provided with a table for the booth. So we thought that we should actually like, uh, not to say recycle, but like reuse whatever we, all, we already have. Since it says to optimize whatever we already have, maybe like decorations for the booth, for example. And then we would also like to um, display certain like uh, records of AMSA in general over the past years to show like the achievements of AMSA or all the past activities that we've conducted to gain their interest of AMSA. Aside from that, we also thought of making like an interactive uh, activity. Maybe we could do some games so that the freshmen would be um, keen to like know more about AMSA and make it as a competition so they can actually have like interest to to know more and also when we uh, and as for the price maybe you could give out the merchandises like these t-shirts lanyards 
and so on. Yep. So we thought that we could also um, maybe um, promote this um, booth thing, maybe in social media as well, since it's widely used. So we believe that that way would um, gain their interest to join AMSA. That is all for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Iman, from, uh, for sharing on behalf of Group 3. Does uh, any of the panelists would like to comment uh, on this scenario? Probably from Charlene. I think it's really, uh, it's really complete and cute <laughs> to have all. Um, yes, um, I think, I think uh, I'll share some of my experience uh, in my tenure. And I think the promotion in events, it's really, really, really effective. Um, the way we use in Taiwan, we, we use lucky draw very, very frequently. And it's like you, um, you have a fan page of your team and then you post it beforehand. And then you uh, instruct them, like for step, step one, you can give a QR code or an easy link for the freshmen or the, uh, the participants to for them to fill up their names and then they can participate in a lucky draw. And then you can give the instructions step two and then they can share the links and tag friends. And that, that means if they tag friends and the, the links can be spread out to other, uh, to other students too. So the, the event or the booth can be known by more people. And the third, the uh, step three is uh, if they can, uh, if they have completed all the step one and step two, and then they can um, come to our booth on the day and then they can get a lucky draw and get some presents. I think it's really effective and really, it's a really funny way. Yes. Okay, probably Alif would like to add anything else. Okay, I think I will share some of my experience in conducting recruitment of freshmen. So in Universitas Indonesia, we have like separate room for each organization. So we have one single room to be used and we took uh, animation team named as Spirited Away, if everyone's know about the animation. So we uh, put a costume and also make many preparation decoration and stuff. I think that's one of things that can show, oh, this organization are really interesting and giving them a good message that we as an organization take them as seriously as possible. And we also provide the merchandise. Like I think Ivan already said that we provide like a one yard or the pin or others that they can take. And I think uh, aside of that, uh, um, uh, back then I was also providing like brochure that they can take to actually look what kind of work program that we provide, what kind of benefit that they will get. And even we provide a booklet that can be accessed online. If you know there is an issue.com uh, that there, it is the e-magazine. So it's a compilation of our work programs in there. So every medical student in Universitas Indonesia could assess it directly online. And I think uh, last but not least, uh, I think it's about how we able to harness the me every member's uh, effort. So I think uh, like, uh, I already mentioned that Amsterdam Universitas Indonesia have 140 members and we want to create the hype by uh, periodically post an Instagram post such as like uh, the, the, uh, like the, the Ministry of the Recruitment and stuff like that. So we want to give a hype uh, sort of like the, like the happiness, like the attractiveness to uh, new members so they can perceive that uh, this organization is really big and is really interesting to read. So yeah, I think that's uh, my experience and maybe some things that can be applied on. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Charlene and Alif for giving a feedback towards this scenario and thank you, Iman, for presenting on, be on behalf of Group 3. And now we'll move, uh, we'll move to the last scenario, which is scenario number four. You have never heard of AMSA before, and AMSA is only introduced in your chapter one year ago. You are a leader of your university's medical student council, and you see the potential of AMSA in your university. However, your dean is not favored uh, to your idea. How would you take? How would you tackle this issue, and how will you involve your chapters and EB into this context? 
they share the general protocol of setting up an organization in your university. Does anyone from group four would like to present their findings? Nami, Amir, can you hear me? Amir, uh, you may proceed. Okay, so for, for this small discussion scenario four, so what we have discussed is first, we need to know why the dean is not favored to the potential of developing AMSA now in the, uh, our university. So when we need to know the, the real reason why the dean is not favored of uh, AMSA development. And then back to the NEB, we need to discuss with them and how we could counter the issue. And also the NEB also can, uh, I would, we would like to suggest that we set a meeting or presentation where uh, we can have the presentation between the administration, uh, AMSA and EB for the chapter and also the AMSA, uh, the university administration so that we can present, we can explain about what AMSA can bring into the university, to the faculty and also how we can actually develop AMSA in the university. And also for the general protocol setting up an organization, what we suggest is uh, first one, we need to have the list of potential members. Uh, of course, because everything we can do, we cannot do everything individually. So we need to have a team first, and then we need to have a constitution complete with vision and also mission. And we have we need to have a list of potential project or potential planning, planning, and then we need to present to the university administration uh, with uh, consultation or under supervision of the chapter NEB. Okay, yes. Thank you so much, Amir, for uh, sharing the findings of your group. Uh, from panelists, are there anything that would you like to give feedback on? Okay, probably starting from Alif. I think uh, Amir's explanation have been clear on this issue. I think uh, we should seek what is the main problem on why the deal itself is not favorable to the idea and Starting from that as the base point, we could provide several things that may attract the dean itself to allow AMSA University to be created on that specific university. And I think the involvement of chapters, uh, executive board is really important because back in AMSA Indonesia, actually there is an, an active approach from this university to contact with the national team. So actually it's not the only AMSA Indonesia that searching for the potential member, but there is an initiative like from them to approach AMSA Indonesia to become members. So uh, the national one should take uh, really care about this new member because they are still new and we, uh, we should treat them as is, as if they are own member because their participation is really important to the growth of the organization. And for the general protocol, I think, yes, it is could be different in each university and yeah, we should take a close watch on this. And I think Charlie, Charlie will help give more better elaboration for this. Um, yeah, <laughs> I think if I'm the leader of the student council, um, because I think we have, as a leader, we have to guarantee every new organization which meets the standards or the protocol of, uh, of the administrative of the school to have the rights to be set up even if my deans or whatever people hate them, I don't know. But um, to persuade uh, to persuade my my deans, um, I think as a leader, I have to do more researches about this team, uh, about this new organization like AMSA, um, to persuade them because like you can approach the uh, the leader of this organi new organization and to fully understand what their future plan and like uh, the group four has pre presented how they are going to recruit their teams and their activities they are going to hold and after you gather all these information and then you can present it to the student council and uh, eventually you can convince them that this is a really uh, really valuable organization like for example, like AMSA to provide many opportunities for students to go abroad or have connections with foreigners. It's really valuable to be set up. 
And for the political part, I think some of the deans of the student council won't be uh, won't appreciate the setup of this organization may be, may be uh, the reason they are not pre they, the reason they not they are not appreciate about this is sometimes because of the financial part so maybe you can ask the uh, the this new organization to provide their financial checking in the future and or find a supervisor of this team so that they can, uh, to ensure this organizing can run smoothly. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for the feedback, Aleph and Charlene, and thank you so much, Amir, for representing on the behalf of Group 4. And that, uh, that will be the end of the second part of our session on managing membership in AMSA. It's been a great two hours, I think two hours and more, getting to learn from our sis and fellow participants. I hope everyone can learn something new. Uh, it's also not for the participants, but also for, uh, for AMSA International, also for the panelists. And before we move to the final part of the session, let us express our heartfelt gratitude to our invited panelists, representing them with certificates of appreciation. The certificates are awarded to Charlene and Alif for imparting their valuable knowledge as panelists in the AMSA International Masterclass Session, Managing Membership in AMSA on 8 November 2020. Let's give our panelists a virtual round of applause.